the heck is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Kind of Funny X Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. Of course, I'm one of your show hosts, Snowbike Mike, and today I am joined by my guy, my gaming dad, Mr. Gary Witta. It's just a Mike and Gary show today, Gary. I, lo- I mean, I don't love that Paris is not here. It's yeah. great to have him, of course, but, of course. you know, me and V, we got yeah. this. We can we carry got this. this. Yeah. We're going to have some fun. And of course, if it's a Mike and Gary show, you know it's going to get a little wacky. It's going to get off the rails, and we're already excited to talk. going to be some hijinks. And that's why I want to jump right into it. Of course, this is the Kind of Funny X-Cast. We post each and every Thursday at 6 a.m. West Coast, Best Coast time on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, RoosterTeeth.com, and of course, on podcast services all around the globe. Do me a favor if you're listening on a podcast service, whatever your favorite platform is, Give us a little rating, maybe a little five-star rating, two-star, three-star. It doesn't matter. Get your voice heard and let us know what you think of the Kind of Funny X cast. Of course, don't forget we are now Epic Games partners, which means if you're upgrading your look in Fall Guys, Rocket League, or Fortnite, or buying that sweet, sweet Fortnite Battle Pass, please use our Epic Creator Code, Kind of Funny, at checkout to help support the team in a brand new way. And talking about support, we'd like to thank those who support us over on Patreon. Whether you're watching live or you're getting the ad-free viewing, you're watching all all of the incredible bonus content like Kind of Feudy, Greg Ways, and so much more. Thank you for your support. And thank you to our Patreon producer for the month of July, Delaney Twining. Thank you so much for your support. This week, the Kind of Funny X-Cast is sponsored by Liquid IV, but myself and the team will tell you in just a little bit. Gary, let's jump into some fun. What the heck have you been playing? What's hot right now, Gary? It's all Diablo all the time. <laughs> That's it's crazy. got its hooks into me big time. Which is strange because I never got in. I've been around for you know the, the whole length of the Diablo franchise. I was editor of PC Gamer back in the day when the first one came out. Yep, dope. I want to say ninety six. That's amazing. It's man. in that. It's well, in that range. Were you into those kind of games back then? Like ninety six. Take me back, Gary. Blizzard comes out with Diablo. Yeah. Were you like, oh man, this is it? Did you have the same craze that you're feeling right now? No, I mean, I like, bl- bl- back then, remember, Blizzard still had a, a, its stellar reputation. Really? Yeah. What was, what I mean, was it? It seems like a title? lifetime ago now, it right? It feels like a lifetime Blizzard, ago. Blizzard, obviously, I was, say, I was commenting the other day that like Diablo kind of feels like a return to old school, like mm. 90s, early 2000s Blizzard, where they could do no wrong. Yeah. Obviously, it's gone a bit sideways since Activision bought them, a lot sideways. But back in the day, Blizzard was one of the few companies where like you just knew they were going to hit every time um the only thing i loved warcraft i loved starcraft Mm. the only thing with diablo was and it's still a problem for me i don't love the world i don't love the mythology the lore it's too bleak it's too dark for my taste okay everyone's fucking miserable all the time what it's all about every quest is like oh demons fucking fucked and murdered my baby (laughs) and you know chopped it up into little bits you got to go collect all the baby bits yeah 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 you know like it's everything's like i don't know why there isn't like every if if you lived in in sanctuary you just fucking kill yourself yeah like everything's muddy and shitty the middle eastern type zone is the only one that looks like nice to live in yeah kajistan everything else is fucked up miserable these miserable farmers Come by side quest. Oh, what's happening? Oh, demons just came by and pissed all over my crops with their demon piss and set it on fire. And now my family's starving. Every quest is like that. So you it's hate so the story. grim dark. It's so grim, and you hate the story. Then why are you into it? Right because now? I like. What's got you? It, it's funny for me because usually I'm very story forward. I've got to like the the, myth, the mythology in the world. Yes. And that is why I had kind of passed on them in the past. Now I did play the original Diablo, and it didn't get its hooks into me. Okay. I played a little Diablo two. That didn't get its hooks in. I played a little Diablo 3. That didn't get its hooks in. I played Resurrected. That didn't get its hooks in. So when this new one came out, I'm thinking, like, this is just not for me. But it looked really good. Like the graphics yeah, in the new one are incredible, right? And I got a code. Thank you to whoever gave it to me. I don't remember. Uh, I thought, I'll give it one more try, one more spin of the Diablo wheel. And this time it paid off. I, I'm loving it. And even though... I'm clicking, I do what I never do in games. I'm like just clicking through the text. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Demon yeah, fucked yeah. your baby. I'll, 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 I'll take care of it for you, whatever. I'm not like paying attention to the lore very much or the mythology or the story. I know the basics of the story, but it's very, all the Blizzard mythologies are so intricate and there's so much lore and mythology and history. Like who's this person and who's that person? Thousand years of history you've got to learn. There's a lot. It's not very accessible. But I just was able to kind of look past that because just the mechanics, the combat loop, just level in. Yeah. Well, you know what I like watching them. We all like watching the numbers go up. You love that. It's you the same. I, I, talk, I say about all the time. It's the same shit at level 100 than it is at level one, just with a few extra <laughs> mechanics. But it's the same thing. Yeah. Get all the shit. You know, go back to town. See if you see if you got anything good. 
replace your shit, upgrade your shit, go back out. So you're watching the numbers go up. Yeah. Give me the rundown. Where are you at right now? How many hours played? What's the level? Have we beaten the game? Where do you stand right now on Diablo 4? Because, of course, I want to talk about Season 1 dropping yeah. right now. But let's talk about where you're at before that. I don't know uh, how many hours I've played or if there's okay. a way to track that. Um, but I can tell you that I currently have a level 80 sorcerer. Yeah. Uh, I'm l long done with the campaign. Finished that a while ago. I'm playing at World Tier 4. Uh, and um, I'm doing Helltides, I'm doing Legion events, I'm doing Nightmare Dungeons, I'm doing all the shit that you do in the end game, and I'm having a blast. It's one of those games, I'm telling you, it's so surprising to me, because all the previous Diablo games have just kind of like gone over my head, and I was like, this is not for me. Something about this one is like, it's just, it's got that, like, it's one of those games where when I'm not playing it, I'm thinking about playing it. And I'm getting up at, I've got, I've got kids, right? Like, after 7.30 in the morning when the <laughs> kids wake up, all bets are off. I'm getting up at 6 in the morning. Just to get, get like game to get an hour or two in You're before crazy. the day starts. Love that. I you know whenever I can play, I'm on. Yeah, as you know, I'm on strike at the moment. Yeah. Um. So I've got some free time, and I've I've been playing it a lot. I probably play. I don't play every single day, but I probably play f five, six days a week for a few hours a day. When was the last game that captured you like this? Right now, can you can you recall the last game that had you like this? I'm trying to think. I don't, it'll come to me. I don't know, but like okay. this, this is definitely this is definitely one of those games. I mean, it was it's so good that it made you turn on your stream again. We were talking I, about I that before. I streamed for the first time in you like a year Twitch. because I I mean, I wasn't like yearning to stream, but I was already playing it. I'm playing with a regular group. I'm playing with my friend, you know, it was Adam. Shout Adam Nickerson. Adam. Adam, I like you a lot. That's my guy. Adam, who knows the who actually helped me out. One thing I will say about these kind of games: if you don't have someone helping you, yeah. I don't think these games are very easy to pick up all the mechanics. Like when I first started playing, Adam, who's played these games for, for years, was like, okay, oh, let me show you what to do. Make sure you go to this person, upgrade this and upgrade that. If you don't have that person, like, like a concierge, showing you like all the mechanics, I don't think the game does a very good job of explaining it to you. There was some stuff even like just last week that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, know, I, I didn't know that I could, um, what was it? Oh, I didn't know that I could add a socket to an unsocketed item. That's something I had. That's something that Adam had to tell had me because the game never told me that, or it didn't do a very good job of telling me that. So um, playing with him, I'd like any game, it's always more fun running with a group. Yeah, we do nightmare dungeons on the regular. Um, it's it's really fun, and uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm really really surprised that I'm enjoying it as much as I am. I'm going to start season one tonight. I'm going to start a new yeah. character, yeah. Uh, and I'm just I'm loving it. There's expansions coming. Like I could see myself being in this for a while. I know there's been some discontent. I was gonna say, Gary, I gotta come to you because I heard there was a game update. I saw a lot of people chirping on Twitter about their sorcerer being nerfed. Do you feel that? Well, I know Doc, my you know my good friend Doctor Lupa Tell who me. plays a sorcerer. Not a ha not a happy chappy right now. <laughs> Look at me, Louie, dropping the uh, but here's, the Doctor Lupo the name right now. Well, I here's, like that. here's here's the thing. Um, I've, I've played post patch. Okay. And I haven't no, I honestly haven't noticed much difference. I probably am leveling slower. Okay. But at that, you know, once you get to like 80 to 100, you're going to be a grind. It's, it's a grind anyway. No matter what. Yeah. But like, I think, I didn't, I didn't even look at the patch notes, but I know that they've nerfed XP and I know that source, a lot of stuff, it was basically a nerfing patch, right? Mm -hmm. They, the, and players don't like that when you, when you nerf them. Um, I'm sure Blizzard's got its reasons for rebalancing it the way that they did. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they'll tweak that more in response to the negative, you know, criticism that's coming in from the player base. I think that anytime there's a big patch, there's always people that are going to complain. Yeah. But it does seem like the negative reaction to this patch was really bad. Like, people are really up in arms about it. Again, what's interesting is I haven't noticed much of a difference yet. And I've played several hours post-patch. I think that I think what you, looking at the, the complaints and the kind of things that people are complaining about... I think the people that are complaining, and this is a big contingent of the game, so fair enough, are the hardcore min-maxers. Okay. Right? Yeah, the, pe course, the people that have got max-level characters that are doing all the high-end shit, mm -hmm. um, who are looking for like the, like the, the, the rarest, unique items, and, and for example, can tell you the difference between the mitigation you get from a resist and the mitigation you get from a piece of armor. I of can't tell you the fucking difference. You know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand the mechanics of the game, and all of my shit is like enchanted with aspects, and I know how the game works, but I'm not like deep enough into it, like the true hardcore, where like if you if you tweak resistance even one bit, they they oh what have you done? Like they're yeah. like hypersensitive. To you it. know that yeah, I'm not yeah. one of those people. So to me, it's not bothering me. But I can understand why the people that are like really hardcore are yeah. into it. 
Like, yeah, I was watching an Asmon Gold numbers, video yesterday. You're going deep in there. You know, Asmon Gold's big time into this, into this world. He was talking about the things that they changed. And it's like, I, I've, been, I've played the game probably for more than 100 hours, 200 hours. And I, and I didn't understand half of what he was talking about because he's playing it. It's like, That's I played chess, yeah. right? But I couldn't have a conversation with Magnus Carlsen about chess mm. because he's on another level. And I think these players are, on, are, are experiencing the game at a level that is beyond where I'm feeling the changes. Does that make right. sense? Oh, totally, Gary. I think anyone listening to this totally understands that, right? There's a different level to that where you go up, and yeah, that those points of a point, right? right. Those fractions of numbers really start to make the difference. That's why you're min-maxing all of that. And yeah, any sort of tweaking and balancing is going to throw all of your charts off and really play a factor. Yeah, I mean, I there are people, I mean, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, yeah. rotating your Paragon board around and like there's so much, there's very complicated mechanics. It is basically, some, somebody said to me like, isn't this just gauntlet? And I said, yeah, it's gauntlet with really complicated mechanics and that's fantastic. Yeah. And like I said, it's fun. I love that loop of like go out, mm -hmm. smash up, rack a bunch of shit, come back. And then it's like Christmas morning. What, what do we get? Or is it how, like, how you come back from like trick or treating? What yeah. do we get? Ooh, like, it's, it's so exciting when you finally get, it's rare that when you get to a higher level and I'm only level 80, I'm not maxed out, but like, once you get to that, you know how it is like when you first start playing the game, everything that drops is that's an upgrade, that's an upgrade, that's an upgrade. Yes. As you get higher, it's, you, you get a lot of stuff, but you end up just salvaging it or selling it because it's not better than what you've You're already got. You're doing the balance, yeah, of but, course. So every now and again, like I got apparently, a, um, I think it was a chess piece that dropped for me and I was playing with some other people that really know the game. And when it dropped for me, they were like, oh shit, you just got the best chess piece in the game. Oh. I didn't even know what it, it was an ancestral Yo. unique. It was, it was the fucking bomb. And well, let me tell you what it does is. So you, see, you got me talking, saying, get it like, going, you, get people so, okay, here. So I have a really, really powerful build. Okay. And I think one of the other reasons why I'm not feeling the effect of the nerf is my fucking build is so powerful. Yeah. And again, I started, I just borrowed it from Adam. He was like, I was playing with him and he was wrecking shit. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? Give me the build. Um, Give me the meta. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. So I, I can't tell you the exact where all the points are, okay. but the, it's heavy. It's primarily frost. Was fire secondary because it applies burning effects to everything yes. that you hit. So here's the combat loop teleport into a group of mobs, 15, 20 mobs, hit a maxed out frost. Now I've got like a level nine frost nova or whatever. Anything that doesn't automatically fucking shatter yeah. is rendered vulnerable for like three seconds. And I just clean up with ice. I, I can work my way through, work, work through, through mobs, including elites, probably like in five seconds and clear a dungeon in less than 10 minutes because the build is so OP. Now, Here's the cool part. This chess piece that dropped that everyone wants, it adds a, an affect to your teleport spell. That when you teleport into a group of mobs, it pulls in everything else around you. Cool. And then when I hit the Frost Nova, which is a, which is a small mm -hmm. area of effect, it fucking wrecks everything on the screen. <laughs> and I'm having so much fun with it. So that is so powerful. Like, basically, I'm killing groups of mobs in six seconds instead of five. And I'm not even seeing the difference. Yes. Right? Um... So I'm loving that. Love that. Uh, love the combat loop. Like, okay. and, and then, like I said, when, when something is rare now, like maybe one out of every 20 dungeons, something will drop that's actually an upgrade. Yeah. But it's exciting when it does because it's rare. Well, let's talk about now season one. Yeah. Dropping. Of course, as of recording, it is July 20th. It's a Thursday. Season one just dropped at 10 a.m. We have Joey out in the studio currently playing it. I know Gary's going to play it later tonight, so they'll give us their reactions and impressions later on. But... Let's talk about it right now. Season one, you got a new character you got to build. So some of the highlights here, of course, you have the option to skip the campaign. Your mount will be available immediately. Yep. All previously discovered altars of Lilith unlocked and the corresponding renown for them. Right. All previously discovered areas of the maps will be revealed and the corresponding renown for them. And the waypoints where everything's unlocked. Correct. And it says, once the season has ended, your character that you made and its progress will be transferred to the eternal realm. Right. So you have the seasonal realm and the eternal realm. And what I found really interesting, right, because as someone who's like, oh, man, I don't really want to make a new character. I did that grind. That's yeah. not really my cup of tea, right? What I thought was really cool from the Blizzard blog post was the seasons are meant for the team with Diablo to go in there and play with things, right? Get really wacky with certain different kind of gameplay mechanics and really boost things and drop things, right? Because it's only temporary and they'll move on to the next thing without touching up and changing up the internal realm, which is your normal realm, right. where they, you know, any small balance will throw everything off, right? So I thought that was really cool of like, oh, that's the understanding is we're going to get wacky and weird. And that's what this is because it is the season of the malignant, which is going to introduce a new threat, 
malignant monsters that will have you learning how to, of course, capture malignant hearts. And these malignant hearts will then introduce 32 malignant hearts across four categories that will affect your gameplay, that you'll be able to see unique bonuses and, count, um, and also provide new ways to play. So I think that's kind of cool, Gary, of like, we're messing with the formula to give you something wacky and wild. But are you into the seasonal aspect of this after putting in so many hours into your level 80 game? Yeah, I'm excited. I got to a point where as much as I'm enjoying it, it is starting to feel a little bit rinse repeat now. Like okay. there's not like, there's not like a big end game thing that I haven't done yet. Mm. Like I, I, everything but PvP, because I'm gonna wait until 100. Uh, but like Hell Tides, all the world events, Nightmare Dungeons, you know, Whispers, all the stuff that you can do, I'm doing it. There's, there's nothing like left for me to discover in the game. So I'm still enjoying playing it, but I'm starting to feel like I'm hitting the ceiling a little bit in terms of the gameplay experience. Yeah. And I've come around on the idea of the season. Um, when they first announced it, and they said, oh, you got to roll a new character. I'm like, me and a lot of people are like, why would you have to, like, I'm annoyed. Like, I've already got hours invested in this character. Why are you making me start over? Mm -hmm. But then Diablo 3 players that have been through this before have all said, no, no, it'll make sense to you. Like, this is how it's supposed to work. Trust me, it's good. You'll, you'll understand it when it happens. And I, I, I'm not going to start until tonight, but based on what I'm seeing, it is starting to kind of make sense. And I'm genuinely excited about it because um, a lot, you said a lot of the stuff carries over, right? You're, you're not going to have to unlock Renown or Waypoints or anything else. So the map's all going to be cleared for you. Uh, and I ran around this week and I got all the altars of Lilith because, again, all of those points apply to all of your characters. They're on, yeah. So that gives you, when you roll a new character, it does already have a little bit of a boost. Got that buff, yep. which is Which is super helpful. Um, and what I'm excited about is the opportunity to play the game in a different way because every class plays differently, right? And again... For me, as fun as, it, as fun as it is, it's now almost on autopilot. Teleport, frost nova, ice shards, boom, done. Pop shields, rinse and repeat. Wait for the cooldowns, go again. And I can clear a dungeon like that like with my eyes closed. But I want to I want to play a I want to play a different kind of game. So I'm going to roll a rogue, Ooh. which was my second choice, okay. and I feel like it's interesting when you play with different classes. Like I see the barbarian doing all this crazy shit or yeah. a druid, and uh -huh. I go, oh, what is that that you just did? That's cool. I never see that because I've basically just got like the five spells in my hotbar that I just keep you know, boom, 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 yeah. boom. But there's all this other shit, right? Necromancers have got skeleton. You see all these skeleton minions. Oh, that's cool. I got to get one of those. So I'm going to roll a rogue and, and, and you know, build out a totally different skill tree and hopefully feel like I'm playing. Like it feels like a fresh way to play the game because I've got a new character, new skills. I've got to learn a new build, new combat loop. Yep, yep. Like, it definitely feels like it's a, a, the breath of fresh air that the game needed at this point. Big positive right yeah. there, especially. Uh, they'll be adding some new ways to play. Of course, there will be Malignant Tunnels, a highly replayable dungeons teaming with fearsome foes to eradicate and, okay. of course, get those Malignant Hearts. There'll also be a new boss for you to go out there and slay, so you get a new boss battle to learn and conquer. And, of course, there is the Season of the Malignant Battle Pass that will have 90 tiers, 27 free tiers, and 63 premium tiers. What do you think about that? Battle well, I'm, I, I don't know if I, I, the funny thing is I actually was gonna spend money on it. Cause, I, okay. I, cause like, mm -hmm. I've got hours and hours of entertainment out of the game. I got the game for free. Yep. I don't mind, I would never buy any of the cosmetics in the store cause they're shit. Like they're, they're, I don't know. Not one has been good looking? N no. But and, and oh. you, I, I don't understand why, how Blizzard is basically banking all of its post-game monetization on these cosmetics. Because who wants them? Speak the real. Is they it not good they looking? Given that you can transmog any piece, okay, and, and like a lot of the stuff that just drops just looks awesome. I've got like a particular like frost set that looks really cool. And yeah, that's the yeah. Stuff that dropped for me. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, again, once you've once you've as you know, even if you salvage a piece of item, what it looks like goes still goes into your wardrobe. Got that transmog, right? So I can so I've got mm -hmm. all these costume options already for free. Why would I pay for stuff that doesn't even look that much better than... And no one's going to go, oh, wow, where'd you get that? They're just going to know that you bought it. Like, who cares? Yeah. Um, so I, that doesn't interest me as much. But like the, so far as the battle pass goes, I was, I was thinking about dropping some money just because I want to get the full experience. And again, I haven't spent a penny on this game. I was lucky enough to get a code. It's given me hours of entertainment already. I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely like my game at the moment. Yeah. I don't mind dropping 10 bucks on, on this to like get battle more pass. fun out of it. Yeah. Um, but as it turns out, I don't even need to because my code is for the <laughs> Ultimate Edition, which comes with the premium battle pass included. So I'm going to get all that shit anyway. There you go. Um, like so I'm excited about that. That also that does come with um, the, the you know the premium armor tiers and stuff. And but I'm mostly just excited about playing a different character. Playing the thing that I was most annoyed about. Why well, have I got to create a new character? Now is actually excited. the thing that I'm excited about because yeah. again, my sorcerer is great, but like, I'm a little bit bored of boom like. I, 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 
trust me, my thumb knows exactly what to do. X, Y, both triggers to pop fire, fire shield and ice armor, yep, clean up with ice shards, and I've, I've just cleared everything on the screen. And I can, I can do that in my sleep. Whereas I, I get to learn, oh, that's cool. Like, what do I want to put on my bar? Like, it's a new character, breath of fresh air. I think, I, I honestly, it, it's such a thankless task being a game developer. Blizzard have fucked up a lot over the years, and a lot of the shit that they've got has been well-deserved. But Diablo 4 is a really fucking good game, right? It's the best thing they've done in a really long time. Really it really does game. feel like the Blizzard of old. Yep. And, uh -huh. I, and I knew, I said, people were complaining about it from day one because there's some people who think that complaining about shit is a fucking replacement for having a personality. And it's so tiresome to me. These people just fucking complain and complain and complain. That's how some people genuinely enjoy a game. Yeah. They enjoy bitching and moaning about it. And when this patch came out, I'm sure there's a lot of validity behind the comments, but there's so much negativity. If I was a game developer, I'd have thrown in the towel. These people are working like crunch and late hours and they finally get it out of there and all you see is a bunch of people pissing and moaning about it. Like, I I've seen so few people go out of their way to say, this is a fucking really good game, which it is. There's never any positivity. And I think it's because it's easier, people are more likely to complain about stuff they don't like than highlight and celebrate things that they do. That's just human nature. Yeah. That's why the internet is so, like, if, I try to do this, but like, if I see a movie that I really like or if I have a good experience out in the world. Tell them about it, Gary. Good like customer what you service. Did. I'll say, hey, this was great. Something good happened today. Or this is something mm -hmm. that I liked. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out of my way to do that. Most people, though, when good stuff happens, like they play Diablo 4, it's a great game. They just get that to themselves. As, some, as soon as something comes on they don't like, like the patch, they're all over the internet complaining about it. That's why the internet is such a negative place. It's the internet. That's the thing, right? So, again, once we get deeper into it, it may, it may well be that some of the, the, the patch is a bad patch. Yeah. And they need to pivot and figure out some of the stuff that they broke. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it only is affecting people at the, high, the, the, the highest of the high end. Yeah. Uh, but, those, again, that's a big part of their player base. So they need to make sure those people are, are happy. But I, the roadmap looks looks good to me. Yeah. Season, you know, free seasons. Yep. There's two big big expansions in development. Here it comes. I feel like you know this game's going to have legs. And I, I, I just want to say it one more time. It's really fun. It's a fun game to play. I mean, even though I don't like the world very much, and I, I joke about how like grim it is, it's one of the most one of the most fun just fucking mad like dungeon crawlers I've played ever. It, I love it. Just love it. Shout out to that Blizzard team making Diablo 4. There's your positivity of the week. Gary, before we leave Diablo, I have one final question for you. Yeah. Why aren't you rolling hardcore? Play with a little risk, Gary. Play with a little risk in your life. Um, I think only mad people, crazy people play hardcore mode. <laughs> it's funny, you know, Fran Mirabella. Yeah. I'm actually going to, he has a Diablo podcast. I'm going to go on next week. Dope. Um, okay. He's got, he has a level 100 character. He's, all the way in. Yeah, I know he is. Uh, you know what? He, you know what? Fran gets a bit between his teeth. Uh, he's, you know, he's usually hardcore Destiny. Now he's hardcore with this at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, he posted when he hit 100, and I joke, jokingly said, You're hardcore or, or are you a filthy casual? And he was joking around with me, and I pointed out that, like, I, I personally think people that play hardcore are nuts. I mean, God bless them. But the most fun that I've got out of hardcore mode and the only fun I'll ever get is watching the YouTube compilations yes. of people dying I know you love it. in hardcore mode. I know you love that. Yep. I mean, you think about it. If you're, if you're, I'm seeing people dying. At, I saw a person die at level 99 fighting Uber Lilith with Lilith one shot. One fucking bar of health left and he had her and she got him. And that's a level. And he was, and he was like this close to dinging 100. How, how long do you think it takes to get a level 100? Long how many hours? Time. Like hundreds of hours of gameplay, uh, yeah, right? Long and that character time, is fucking gone. Gone. It's gone. But you like, had the story. It, like, it, I mean, it's truly, little. truly hardcore. Yeah. And I love that it's a feature. I think love it's a it. lot of fun for, you know, to, to have to, and to talk about as we are right now. But if you're playing hardcore, you're a fucking lunatic. <laughs> That's what I love about it. I love that. But no, Gary. I would, I would never touch that shit. You know, you're talking about watching YouTube compilations complimation, of people failing. Mm -hmm. And I know I have been addicted to a game right now called Only Up, which is all the about The rage compilations are hilarious on that as well. Back up. Gary, let me tell you what. This game has stolen my heart. I cannot stop thinking about Only Up. All I want to do is conquer Only Up. And, of course, we are an Xbox podcast. But, you know, the cool part about I bet us. You, I bet you it ends up on the Xbox. Oh, man, it better. It should. Because cool part about us, we talk about anything. You know what I mean? We love sharing the hype of awesome video games. This game, Gary, is so much fun. 
It is the rage. It is the overcoming that obstacle that got you stuck and getting past it and getting better. And I can't stop thinking. But it's that same thing as as, uh, getting up with Bennett Foddy, right? When when you fall, you you can really, oh, Jump King, right? You can really fall. Oh, it's so cool, Gary. It, I mean, shout out to whoever created this game. It is so much fun, Gary. It is wacky. It is weird. Oh, this is Tim. Did Tim rage at all yeah, when he was playing? We have it? made great content out of it. We had the kind of funny founders last week all get together, all three of them, and play this and just absolutely lose their minds to their breaking points. Like this game has taken over the world. This is right another now. one that I would never play because I, I wouldn't have the temperament for it. I'd be buying a new TV by the end of the week. <laughs> I would just put my foot through it. But I do enjoy watching. I watched one that was like all the high-end streamers, like yeah. the, 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 the pokies and the just Dr. Disrespect playing it and losing their shit. Because the, the, here's the clever thing about it. We talked about it before. It basically is just um, getting up mm-hmm. or Jump King in 3D. Of course. Right? Here's the difference, though. When you fall in getting up or when you fall in Jump King, like the moment you fall, you know how much you're going like, to... Oh, it happens all at once immediately and you fall. In this game, when you fall, it's a process, right? And it's a, it's a question of how far are you going to fall? Yep. And you see the rage building. As people start to fall, and they go, oh, no, I'm going to fall. Oh, but maybe, I can, maybe I'm going to hit that ledge underneath. Oh, shit, no, I've missed it. I'm going to fall even more. Yeah, it goes. And the rage actually, it's genius in that way. Yeah. And I, I'd be fascinated to talk to the developers. Like, did you design this game as kind of streamer bait? Right? You think we talk about like some games pick up and become successful virally because the big streamers adopt them. We know that happened with, with Among Us. We've yes. seen other examples that happened with Jump King. Um, and this is the latest game. I was talking to Adam the other day, they said we should make a game that is just designed to make streamers rage. So exactly. it'll go viral. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what these guys did. It's very, very clever. Success. And I wish them all a success. Yep. It looks very janky. It's got a very indie yeah. vibe to it. Uh-huh. That's, that's part of its charm. It's part of it. it's right? right? It does a lot of bullshit. Like, so, there's no way, like, I, I know I was watching uh, Pokemon play, right? She jumps onto a platform, and there's no way of knowing, but it just, it was a collapsing Gone. play. There's no yeah. way to know. Like, uh-huh. it's not even, like, the game is like, it's not even your fault. She got into an elevator, thinking, oh, this will take me up, and it just fucking plummeted all the way down. So the game will, like, fuck, you with, fuck with you in ways that are totally unfair, but that, again, is part of the, the charm. Oh. It's, I think that was a game, and again, I'd love to hear from the developers. I'm sure someone's interviewed them by now. Maybe Danny O'Dwyer can do a... Um, a no clip. No, do a no Got clip on to, it. Yeah. I guarantee you that at some point, either either like this was the whole this was the whole catalyst for it, or at some point they said, "Oh, you know what's you know why this is going to blow up is because streamers are going to play this and they're going to lose their shit." And then so let's build as much stuff into it that is going to like make people rage as much as possible. Genius, and they deserve all the success. So all the desire to rage and conquer. Sometimes I need a little downtime, and I have two awesome indie games that I have to share with you and our audience and make sure it's on everybody's radar, because I think this is a great game for your kids, Gary. I think this is a great ca- game for people that want to just get cozy and creative. On PC right now, coming to other consoles soon enough, Sticky Business. Yeah, you, I, I made a note of it when you so told me about it earlier. So Sticky Business needs to be high on your indie charts right now. Sticky Business is okay, a here small is. business simulator where you create... Your own small business. Oh that my is god, my kid's gonna love this. Stickers. My daughter's you, gonna love this. Gary, you create your own stickers on the fly. They give you a bunch of tools. It's like micro. It's like clip art way back in the day, right? And so you make all your own stickers. You go to print them. Then you go to your website. You can sell them. You can get more new sticker models. Of course, customers will come with their stories. You'll ship them out to them. This game got me so in i was creating my, stickers and my i felt kid creative, loved loved stickers it. yep she somehow managed to steal my 17 inch razor laptop it's not mine anymore she's just taken it. it's hers now of course i tried she, to do that I'm kind of funny she Andy most she mostly me. plays the sims 4 <laughs> on it but when i show her this she's gonna love this gary this is a, ga- ga- a great game for kids anyone that wants to get a little yeah, creative this is perfect super simple to understand but like i said you take these small clip arts if you're just listening and you put them on a board and you make them into a sticker. You go off and print them. You sell them. You even get to package them and then oh ship them off. It is so my, my much kid, fun. Yeah, my kid is going to be obsessed with this. A must-play game. Okay, good. I love it. Great, great, great recommendation. One. And I truly believe that this could be Indie Game of the Year because we have an insane year of video games going on right now. Mm-hmm. You could break down your top 10 and you could have only AAA games. Yep. And then there is another top 10 of There's just indies, indie yeah. games. Because yep. there are so many good games. It's a great year Dave for games. Dave the Diver. 
I was Might asking you about be this before the game. The game, indie game of the so year. So many people have asked me the last couple of weeks, have you played Dave the Diver? Tell me about it. I don't know yeah, what it is. This is a must play game. Okay. So Dave the Diver is a mismatch of genres. First genre is a open sea adventure game. You're going to go into the water. You're going to swim around in a awesome um, oh, pretty. environment that is changed every single time you dive. So it will never look the same. It's always randomized. Okay. And so on top of that, when you dive, you're going to go fishing. You're going to find an underwater society that has been hidden for years, right? You're going to then go out and just have a good time exploring. But all the fish you catch, Gary, you're going to take a top side because at night, you now run and manage a sushi restaurant. So on top of this, you will have a restaurant management sim where you will each night not only make the menu off of all the ingredients you caught, but you will serve and deliver food and drinks just like root beer tapper. But on top of that, you can hire staff members to do it all for oh, you. Oh, it looks so much fun. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. You can customize your restaurant however you want it. You can elevate the business. I mean, Gary, this game rocks. You know what this almost reminds me of in a weird way? Cult of the Lamb. Because yes. it's like it kind of fused, you know how Caught the Lamb kind of fused two very different, mm -hmm. like a roguelike and then, but then like a, you know, build up your community sense. Yes. This has got those two different aspects, but they, they coexist. Yeah, exactly. Killer music, awesome art style. Right when you see it, it will pop off the screen when you look at it. This game is so much fun. It is unique. It's different. And this, it looks great. This team has found a formula that is absolutely killing it. Yeah, right and like now. I said, it seems to, it seems to be hitting because everyone's talking about it yeah. right now. Yeah, I mean, I want to shout out Dredge is another great uh, game. You talk about catching fish, Gary. I know you're into that. Looks like Dredge like, is a really good one. As sorry, well. it looks like it looks like uh, PC and Switch. Yes, just right now. Uh huh. Okay, uh -huh. I might so grab the Switch more. version so I can play it in the living room. Got to grab a hold of this one, Gary. And then, of oh, course, uh, yeah, Switch in 2020. It's not out yet. I'll grab it on PC. I want to finish it off with Exo Primal. Gary, this yeah. game just came, came to Game Pass as well, so let's bring it back to some Xbox stuff. My friends loving this. I enjoyed it. Came out to about middling reviews, sevens and eights, nothing too crazy. Yeah, I know Jeff Gersman was not thrilled with but it. But let's just say this, Gary, it's a fun time. It's a Is very good time. Is this the one where I was joking time. about why are we killing vegetarian dinosaurs yes, and not yes, hitting anyone? That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah, were okay. joking about. So this is a very interesting one because you go 4v4 against another team, but you don't actually see them in the first half. So as you start off the match, and there are different game modes as you progress through the game, but so far for what I've seen on the early game, it is a 4v4 match where you will progress through a small linear map killing different dinosaurs, right? You'll hit one challenge point and it'll be like, hey, slay five pterodactyls, and four stegosaurus. Then you'll move on. It'll be like, hey, slay the big T-Rex, and you'll keep pushing it. Then you will hit an end point where you'll then be changed into a different area where you will see the other team, and it is push the payload, essentially, with Overwatch 2. So you and your team will be pushing a oh, payload, and there will be I a like moment payload games. where All you will... I like back to Team Fortress 2. I used to love payload. You two will collide, and you have the moment of, we need to push our payload, but also kill the other team to stop their payload. But then we need to get it to the finish line and upload the payload. So they're looking at us. It is a very interesting multiplayer game. And for it to be on Game Pass right now, it's a yeah, ton it's, of yeah, fun. It's on Game Pass. Well worth, it, well worth the download and check out. The awesome mechs, really cool dinosaurs, good time all around. Yeah, it feels like one of these games that is kind of, I don't know, just come and gone a little bit because again, like you said, there's so much else going on right now. Yeah. You know, whether it be indies, whether it be the other big AAA games, we've got obviously the big, big bangers still to come, Starfield, yeah, yeah. Spider-Man, you know, the, the big ones are coming. I feel like Exo Primal is just one of those that like is kind of like, oh, me too, but like no one's really paying that much attention to it, even if, even if maybe it's good. Yeah, it's a tough one right now, Gary, especially in the shooter market. There's just so much going on over there. I'm sure you saw Battle Bit Remastered. Another incredible indie game. If you haven't seen this, it's essentially pixelated art. Just like imagine Roblox but it's Battlefield. 120 okay. versus 120. It looks just like you're playing in Minecraft and Roblox, but it is a hardcore Battlefield sim. Oh, fun. Giant maps that fully destructible worlds. That's a great game as I'm well. I'm going to put that Holy on my list cow. as well. I've got two I want to bring up. I, come on, Gary. Keep them coming. Um, and I know you played one of them because, again, we were talking about before the show. So also on Game Pass, this is so such my jam. Arcade Paradise. Yo. Oh, I know you've played it, yes. right? So it's yes. one of these kind of cutesy business management sims. You inherit an old laundromat. Correct. And you turn it into the video arcade of your dreams. Love it. That's and you can so play my the arcade jam. games. Zone out with that. It's a, this is a fun mismatch and a cool idea. Really cool. I'm going to play. And then the other thing I've got a flag for, I'm sure you know about this. We haven't talked about it yet. Two-player co-op coming to Vampire Survivors. Come on. 
Four up to four. Four play. We Gary, got. We got to do it. I want you to know Can that we, I we have got a stream. stream bring here. me in for if you do a stream. Yep. Bring me in for that. I have a stream here at Kind of Funny that's on the big couch, and it just says Gary Witter written across the I'm top. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. We're going to make that. Four-player vampire survivors. Of course. Oh, my God. You know who we got to get? Phil Spencer. Put you and Phil Spencer together? Put me and Phil the on the couch. Vampire I've been on the couch gods? with Phil before, you know, when I did Animal Talking. Come on. Me, Phil, and Lisa Loeb. Get Lisa in. <laughs> <laughs> she like, you think Lisa Loeb would like vampire survivors? Uh, she gonna, is she going to learn? She's going to have a good time? I think it's a cool idea, Gary. So, yeah, I think shout out to vampire survivors. That sounds like a ton of fun, and I can't wait to play it with you finally. That was the one game that I recommended to Henry Cavill when I met him recently. That's wild. Because we mostly, it's the fun. I was there, to, there to, to talk to him about a project, but we mostly talked about building PCs and video games because he's a proper nerd. Like, he's <sighs> legit. He said, What's one game you'd recommend to me right now? I said, Fucking vampire survivors. He said, Is it on Steam? I said, Yeah, it's like three bucks. I'm fucking getting it as soon as I get home. Oh, so he's, I, hope, I probably got him into vampires. I hope you bump into him and see if, yeah. he, if he played it or oh, not. Yeah. What he thought. Uh, man, oh man, we are having so much fun talking about some great video games. But we do have some Xbox news to fill you in on. But we'll do that right after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Y'all know how much I love to stay hydrated and Liquid IV makes it easier and better than ever to ensure that I'm always living my best, most hydrated life. And you can too. Liquid IV, the number one powered hydration brand in America is now available in sugar-free with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone and you can keep your daily routine exciting with three new flavors white peach green grape and lemon lime let me tell you the white peach is good it's real good we hear it kind of funny swear by this stuff one stick of liquid iv in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone real people real flavor real hydrating now sugar free grab your liquid iv hydration multiplayer sugar free in bulk nationwide at costco or get 20 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code kind of funny at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order when you use promo code kind of funny at liquidiv.com. All right, Gary Widda, welcome back. We have gone off the rails just like you knew we would. I think we're on the rails. We're talking about video games. That's what what? we're supposed to be doing. Let's get off the rails one more time. Go on. Gary, you know I love spending money on bad things. I love spending money on dumb things, Gary. Is this going to be dumber than those gamer socks? This might be dumber than the Because there's nothing dumber than that. The Assassin's Creed Twitter has tweeted out, where Mirage meets reality. Discover okay. the Assassin's Creed Mirage haptic system in collaboration oh, with Oh Wow I Gaming Official. I saw a Penny Arcade comic about this. Yep. So it's time to change your fate. Now you will not impersonate Bassam. You will be Bassam. I thought they made that up for the comic. I didn't think that was real. Use your uncanny skills to avoid being seen while seeking justice. Get your exclusive Assassin's Creed Mirage Special Edition now. The offer includes a digital copy of the game, blah, blah, blah. Hold on, hold on. But I see this it thing. uses the Oh Wow system. You will be able to feel your precise movements when you take down your targets. But beware. They're out to get you. Don't let your enemies get too close or you will will feel the consequences. So, of course, well, I mean, getting obviously, stabbed in the back? <laughs> what's, the, what's the deal so, there? I mean, so, uh, oh, okay. I'll tell you all, all right. about the gamer shirt. Let me tell you, because, of course, if you're just listening, you're probably so like, questions. Mike, I have no idea what this is. The Assassin's Creed Mirage Special Edition is coming with a haptic feedback T-shirt, essentially, that will allow you to feel what's happening in the video game. And, of course, if you're a big is VR fan. stab you? Like, what's it going to do? Uh, Gary? Let me tell you what, I started watching, I went down the rabbit hole, I started video? watching videos. There are kids that are playing VR games and their arms are trembling because of what's going on. It's like stimulating your muscles, right? And the kid had it on so hard, it was trembling his arms. How do these shaking people have up and down. access to the suit already? So it's already been out. Oh, so it's that's already out? It's already out. This is just the special edition one, right? Oh. And so if you don't know what the Oh Wow vest is, it is a shirt to skin contact, so meaning... Gary, you and I, you don't get to wear anything underneath no, it. You have to like wear a, it. Like a wetsuit. Yeah, it's very similar to what I'm wearing, right? Like yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. the active fit t-shirts. I would actually call it like a bike. You know, like a Tour de France, like bikers. Yeah, like a those like, jerseys. It's very, like very form-fitting. That's like what a it is. Like kind of thing. It has 10 sensor locations. Get this. Bluetooth enabled and fully wireless, which I love, and compatible with many consoles, VR headsets, mobile, all that, and other games. It's currently 500 euros, 499 euros. So do that equation to whatever your local uh, currency is. But Assassin's Creed has teamed up with them 
where Assassin's Creed will have this going on, where you'll be able to feel what's going on in the game. But what's it really going to do other than just like rumble and vibrate a little bit? That I'm going to be like, oh, I've been stabbed in the gut. Yeah, oh, like, you know what I mean? A, it's not going to feel like being stabbed, and B, <laughs> you don't want it to. <laughs> So, I don't know. I mean, I would try. I mean, obviously, this is kind of funny content waiting to yeah, happen. Uh -huh. right? You've got to get your hands on this suit. Um, I have a couple of... Uh, so, my first two questions. Lay it on me. Lay it on me. Is it one size fits all? Like, what, they what, have what, what about sizes. the, large, what about the nine, larger gentleman? Nine different sizes on the or website. Or lady. Nine different webs. Nine okay, different all right, sizes. Okay, A lot of right. sizes. A lot of okay. sizes. Because I've lost weight, but I'm still, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm a big guy. N nine different sizes. All You'll right. be able to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, of course, you know, the, the real question... Oh, they're matching pants. No, <laughs> no pants. Just those the top, I might be Gary. interested in. No pants, Gary. There's no pants on this one. It could, t it could tickle your taint for uh -huh. you. The question is, how much? <laughs> I can't laugh at Yeah, you got Barrett. You <laughs> you're can, you're can getting me, it, but I, I, I didn't room. expect to hear the phrase tickle your taint <laughs> yeah. on this show today. <laughs> I have to keep it semi professional here, is right. How that much? wasn't even over the mic. That no. was like through the wall. <laughs> yeah. How much, it. Gary? If it's 4.99 euros plus the game, how much is this special edition coming in at? I'm going to say $4.99 with the game packed in. Okay. That's wild. Oh, uh, 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 have they not announced the price of no, it yet? No, not yet. Okay, not but yet. I mean, it's, it's got to be in that. You think so? It's not going to be any cheaper than the suit. Correct. But yeah, what, what's the balance? Now we're talking about buying a whole console for just Assassin's Creed Mirage. Yeah. I mean, are they... Are they expecting a lot of a lot of, uh, to sell a lot of these? That would be very interesting. I mean, it's got, I mean, it's got us talking, right? It's interesting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'd be keen to try it. I've bought dumb stuff in the past. I'm looking at this one. We'll see. What I think happens. you got to get. I think you've got to get everyone on kind of funny <laughs> wired up with these things and get them all on the, on on content. Let's talk some Xbox news because we got to give some flowers out and we got to give a big thank you to an incredible career. Major Nelson, aka Larry Herb, has left Xbox. This is the tweet. After 20 incredible years, I've decided to take a step back and work on the next chapter of my career. As I take a moment and think about all we have done together, I want to thank the millions of gamers around the world who have included me as part of their lives. Also, thanks to Team Expo Xbox team members for trusting me to have a direct dialogue with our customers. The future is bright for Xbox, and as a gamer, I'm excited to see this evolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll see you online, Larry Herb. P.S. The official Xbox podcast will be taking a hiatus this summer and will come back in a new format. The GOAT, Gary, someone who inspired me to be at this table with you, and of course, that kind of funny and just pursue a career in video games, getting to talk about it, is leaving Xbox, and it's wild to think about that because he is the face. He was the voice, the face for many, many years. And we've gotten to be introduced to a lot more faces as Xbox has kind of come into the light with their team. But Major Nelson was that face for a long, long time. Yeah. Guess who I was on the phone with for half an hour before I came in today? Who? Larry Herb, a.k.a. Major Nelson. You didn't say, hey, you want to be on the podcast? Hang out with us? No, I did. He's going he's gonna to come in when, okay. when, when he feels the time is Good. right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, Gary, it's funny. We've had, of course, Major Nelson on the podcast twice now. Yeah. And so you guys can go back and check out those podcasts. But that was our third ever podcast. You, yeah. me, and Alana had Major Nelson on. Oh, one of my yeah. gaming heroes. And you always ask, could you get one back? That would be my one. Of like, man, I wish me and Major Nelson, because well, I'm so scared he's, and he's, nervous. I said he's welcome anytime, and he said he'll come in. Good. Get some rest. Get some rest and go have some fun. But, of course, he has a YouTube channel. Maybe he'll post yeah. over there and go follow that. I will say... His blog and website, I always used to frequent and go check out all the time. Seeing him as the face, listening to the customers, I think was a big deal for Xbox and many big major corporations. Pretty incredible to have someone like that on your team for 20 years. Larry's, you know, like me, he's, an, he's one of the older statesmen of, yeah. the, uh, of the video game industry. Been around forever. Obviously, one of the most visible people in the business. He's been the face of, of Xbox since the launch. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be weird, right? Cause he's so, so the guy yeah. that there's going to be uh, some, uh, I don't know if there's going to, if they're going to replace him with someone else or do a different kind of strategy or whatever, but like major Nelson and an Xbox have, have, have been synonymous for forever. Yeah. And that era is coming to an end. Um, but you know, whatever he does next, I'm sure it'll be great. Um, I, I wish him the best. Wish him all the best. And of course, the Xbox podcast, the official Xbox podcast will return 
which is exciting because he had a great crew and cast around him that really grew up and have evolved with him. So I look forward to seeing that. And who that. even needs it when you got this? You got us. You got us. I mean, you got us and so many awesome Xbox podcasts, but that's a special Do you think people are talking about getting your taint tickled on the official no. podcast? <laughs> no, I think not, Mike. I promise you, Gary, you got to come here. Talk about you got to come here for that shit. I would get an earload if we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> they let that happen. It's right. Uh, let's have some fun, Gary, because, of course, Major Nelson is leaving, but we have a big positive here from the summer. Uh, of course, congratulations to Team Xbox and Bethesda on a huge summer showcase. The Xbox Wire shared that this year's summer showcase was the most viewed and highest rated Xbox show ever. With over 92 wow. million viewers, the team saw a 38% rise in viewership over last year's show. You know what I'd be interested to know? Lay and I was going to ask... Um... Todd about it when he was on, but you know, we had more important questions to ask, like, is there going to be fishing? In we the had game? to know. Jess Corden's stupid fucking dumbass questions. <laughs> um, I was, I'd be curious to know how many people actually showed up for the, the cinema, the Fathom events all around uh, the world presentation yeah, yeah. that they did. Uh huh. Like, you got to be hardcore to do that. I begged Tim and Greg to let me stay for that because I really wanted to be a part of it. But of course, we have to come make awesome content for all of our listeners and watchers out there. And it's so much fun to do that. On it's the cool couch. that they did that. But yeah, I think it's so cool, right? Because you have this big event. And sure, we're not meeting down in LA anymore for E3, but Xbox has found a way to connect with gamers all around the globe, right? You see them out in Europe doing stuff. They're down in Australia doing stuff. And I think it's just so cool, no matter the time zone, no matter where you're at, hey, we're going to make a fun event. We'll have team members there. Like, right, Major Nelson was down in Australia doing mm -hmm. that, right, mm -hmm. representing the team. And they're doing fun. they were doing their nails with the cool Xbox collaboration nail polish I thought was fun. They're teaming it up, making collaborations with different games to theme the events. I think it's a great idea, Gary. No, I think it's I think it's very cool. You know what? I don't know if I mentioned this because I've not been on much lately because yeah. there's been so much going on. Um, you know what's really cool is that Starfield controller and that headset. Yo, my new Gary. favorite controller. And I, you, know, you know, I got a lot of controllers, Mike. You're gonna do the Forza Horizon see-through yellow Forza, like the Forza that? Horizon one is a is a is a is a. I'm very ambivalent about it <laughs> because I don't like. The color scheme, I think it's weird. It, I mean, I get it, but like, it's too garish for me. But okay. I really like because it's that translucent plastic. I like that. I like the way that the Xbox Jewel like really glows, like it lights up almost the whole controller. Of course. Um, and that rubberized feel, the, the steering wheel steering material wheel on the back, tape? like it's Come the best on. feeling controller. Yeah, yeah. Like if you want good feel, that's the controller. You don't care how it looks, that's the controller to get. But the best looking, the best aesthetic controller, I think now is a tie okay. between the Master Chief Elite. Oh which is a thing of beauty so good. and the Starfield controller and the Starfield headset is also beautiful. The one thing that I don't know if they told you this, but I, if they've mentioned it as like a selling point, it's a small thing, but it's a really nice touch. When you power on the official game, uh, uh, uh Xbox headset, which I also have, yeah. you know, which I've always said before for 99 bucks, it's the best wireless headset. Great grab. The, yeah. We get, like I that think. one a lot. It's terrific. Um, when you turn it on, it makes a little kind of Xbox chime type sound. Yeah, yeah. When you turn on the Starfield one, it makes this high tech. Sound. I presume it's from the game, but it's sound, but it, like all the sound effects that are attached to the headset really? like in the headset firmware. That's I, great. I presumably are from Starfield because it sounds like super high tech and like something you'd hear on a spaceship. It's really oh, cool. that's yeah. cool, Gary. Yeah. They've done a good job with that. The chimes, just the small attention to just detail. little things. You get, you know, yeah. you get the. Um, they've done this now with a few controllers with the 20th anniversary controller, and now it also comes with a. Uh, it detects the controller and gives you access to like a uh, custom uh, wallpaper, you know, yes, theme like for, your, a lot. Uh -huh. for your desktop. Looks great. Gosh, shout out to that one. It's right. It's a good one. So, of course, Gary, the fun isn't done because we do now know. There's more? Xbox is coming to Gamescom this August. Okay. Of course, they will be at the show in Germany and they're saying they will have their biggest booth ever to show off incredible games that they have coming your way. Now, Gary, biggest booth ever. You've been to some gaming conventions in your day. Let's talk about the Xbox booth. What will be there? What entices gamers to come to the biggest booth ever put on by Xbox? I don't know because I kind of feel like, you know, the industry is, at least in the U.S., is moving away from the E3 type events. Right? E3 is dead, mm -hmm. right? You've got Summer Game Fest, which I guess is the spiritual successor. Yeah, but, but, the, but, the, but the idea of like a big convention hall with like mega blaring booths, that feels like the old days yeah but in games gamescom which is i believe still the biggest games show in That's the world correct. yep fully open to the public it's huge um and so it's, it still has validity 
for you know these big. I think it's just, I, I don't think necessarily the big shows in my just something like E three just like never survived the never got over quite got over the pandemic. It's it started to put off. Like, I don't know the vibes were off. They had E3. a couple like, of they, vibe they check never, moments that they, they never didn't pass, they yep. never and obviously Keeley came in and fucking did the the kill shot mm -hmm. um, and like you know helped them into their early grave. But ga I've never been, but I'm, Gamescom seems like I, mean, I would never go because it's too many oh, people. I would go. I would go in a heartbeat. Yeah. It's way too many I'd be people. interested. Too big, I, too many people. You know, I, I thrive in those. I get so excited no, to see it's why, it's why I'm not. It's why I'm like, not sad to be It's so here. many people that it's like hard to even walk throughout like the oh my God. I, 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 Where it's shoulder to shoulder, thousands of people getting from one place to I, another. I saw that picture. There was a picture out of Star Wars Celebration in London recently. And, yes. and they, people were like this. Yes. Uh, it, was like, it, was like, it was like a Tokyo subway train. And I got like, I got like a panic attack just looking at the picture they had that down in LA with that anime convention as well yeah and, and games and Gamescom is like that and San Diego mm -hmm. Comic Con going on right now even with you know all of the celebrities and the stars mm -hmm. staying away because of the strike it's still packed out yeah. it's too, I can't do it I can't do those big shows anymore so what much. are the games you want to play then let's, let's talk about okay. the booth you and I were with Team Xbox we're setting up the booth it's going to be our biggest ever yeah. what are the games that will entice people to come to our booth what do you got? Well, on? I presume there's got? going to be the opportunity to be hands on with Starfield, right? They've got to have playable Starfield. That's sure. the interesting one, right? Like, where's Starfield? Because Starfield comes out in September. Yeah. Are we putting a playable, playable build of Starfield in front of people right there at Gamescom? What is that build? Well, is why it wouldn't you? It's their, big, it's their biggest game, and it's the launches around the corner. Why, why, why wouldn't I, they go I with totally it? Totally agree. I just, I guess, with a game that opened and big to me. Yeah. How do you? How, how do that? I frame this? Is yeah. it just yeah, character it's, it's, creator? It's, it's not a game that you're going to play at a booth for ten minutes and come away with any sense of it. Correct. Right. But they've like, got a feature. I mean, maybe they won't have like playable stations, but like there's going to be some big Starfield. Yeah, exactly. I think thing. TVs playing for yeah, moments yeah, yeah. and montages. I think if you were to do Starfield, like I'm bringing up, I think you do character creator. You let them build the creator. Okay, the character, that's fine because that's something you can fiddle around cool, with. Yeah, be able to see the traits and the new backgrounds that they have. Sure, and just show you that because yeah, right. What am I going to do? Show you the beginning of the game to let you be spoiled and let you spoil other people? Can't do that, right? What am I going to put you on some random planet to run around with no context? Maybe I guess what one outpost and you go shoot seven guys yeah no you're right it's that not, doesn't it's not, feel it's right it's not a game that you're gonna get in like a 10 minute but i do agree with you like you know you gotta have starfield right you would the way to. the way it works is those boots like you know you're gonna you're gonna get 10 minutes before you know the person's like put yeah. moving you on for, so yeah. the next person can have a go exactly it's not well suited for that but obviously it's it's their biggest game like it would, be, it would seem weird if it wasn't there i mean what else, i mean what else well we got forza sense? yeah sport i don't care about that but that's easy you yeah. do one race, yeah, it's you're another, out. That's another so Forza no Motorsport, yeah. I feel like, yeah. is an easy win. Those are our biggest titles of the first-party launch titles this year that are coming out, right? Then we stretch into Hellblade. Yep. We got a little playable slice of Hellblade, because that's an easy one, mm -hmm. right? Point A to point B, experience yep. the sound, see yep. it. Is that, you think, yeah, ready? Yeah, sure, why not? That makes okay. sense. I like that. Um, Age of Empires. Age of Empires 4 is supposed to be coming to console. That's another weird one to just pick up and play for 10 minutes, though, because you've got to learn the systems. It's true. And it's true. That is true. They did announce a ton of indie games mm -hmm. during their Xbox game showcase. Of course, not always all first party. Do you think we could team up with some indie games and bring that, like maybe 33 Immortals, that we all liked the look of that one and have some game stations on that? When is uh, Stray coming to Xbox? Very, very soon. Yeah. I think before this, I think. Oh, before even this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what they're going to have there, but, you know, I just in general, you know, uh -huh. not not that long ago, we had that moment when we were talking about the L cast and the vibes are off. Yes, and yes. I do, I, 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 the vibes feel better now than they did then, don't the you think? The vibes are much better. The vibes are much better. I think we're, we're trending. I think Phil did a great job, of course. He came on our podcast, a selfish plug, and, like, yeah, it's easy to be like, oh, he did a great job with us, right? But, like, I think Phil showed his vulnerability. He showed that the oh, team was yeah. down after Redfall, right? Yeah. And I think after what they showed at Summer, right, the Summer Showcase picked it all back up. What Todd and this team has shown with Starfield has really made some big, like, kind of promises and expectations that we're on the right track. Yeah. But... And you've got I, Activision Blizzard presumably now going through after correct. the FTC got a and, kicking in court. And it's easy to say that, that, like, the vibes are better. But truly, we still haven't hit that stride yet, right, Gary? Like... We're having good vibes because we've seen some good stuff. But the question is, are we playing good stuff from first party? Right? Like, right. That's my catch. Not like, enough. We're playing some great third party and games. Phil's, and Phil's acknowledged that. Exactly. But, I, like, we haven't gotten to the point where, like, vibes are good, but they could be better. 
We could hit that domino and like. You sounded very Pedro Pascal yeah. there when you did. Hey, could be better. <laughs> could be better, Gary. So I, I, I'm looking forward to that. I look forward to the fans out at Gamescom having a great time at that booth. I wish I could see that because I'm always interested in the convention nah, scene. Stay home and watch, just watch love, the trailers on your yeah, couch. But I want to see the booth is what I'm getting at. Like, I love the idea of like There'll be videos seeing of that the Xbox too. booth. I would love to know. Oh, no. Also, you know, the it's a young man's me? game, Mike. Hey, Xbox merch team. I know I've brought you up a bunch because you guys are absolutely killing it. Is the Xbox merch team there? Are they selling merch at the booth? I hope so, because I love some good Xbox I know, merch. I know you like that merch. Yeah. Oh, man. Gary, I bought that camping set, the hammock and the I know, chair. I know you And did. I'm out traveling the globe with that chair right now, man. I love it so it's much. Good. It's great to see. All right, Gary. We said goodbye to Major Nelson. Of course, we celebrated the summer. We have to say goodbye to one more thing today. Oh, no. Goodbye to Xbox Live Gold. Oh, right. And yeah. hello to Game Pass Core. Here's the details you need to know. Starting September 14th, Xbox Live Gold will become Xbox Game Pass Core. It will feature online multiplayer, 25-plus game collection similar to Game Pass, starting at $9.99 a month or $60 a year. Games with Gold will be no more. The collection will have 25-plus titles from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and Partners, for Xbox One and Series X and the X. Xbox Live, just some fun notes that I got for all of you. Xbox Live launched on November 15th, 2020. Games with Gold started in July 2002. 2013. 2002. Thank Xbox you for that Live. one. Uh, July, or July 2013 on Xbox 360. Your Game Pass Core will not be eligible for EA Play. You must have PC or Ultimate for that. And so here's some of the titles. They haven't confirmed all 25, but here's some titles coming to that 25-plus game collection. Among Us, Descenders, Dishonored 2, Doom Eternal, Fable Anniversary, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Grounded, Halo 5 Guardians, Halo Wars 2, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, Human Fall Flat, Inside, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Psychonauts 2, State of Decay 2, The Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Edition. That's a decent lineup. A strong lineup. There's some question marks that I have, but I think this is a very strong lineup, right? You talk Among Us, gigantic. Inside, course, one of the best games I've it. ever played. Inside, one of the best ever. Fallout 4, great one. Doom Eternal, killer. Descenders, a ton of fun yeah. downhill mountain biking. Here's one, two that I have question marks on. Forza Horizon 4. Why not 5? I think, I think 5 is still considered too much of a premium game. Halo 5 Guardians. Why not Halo Infinite? Nobody wants to play it anymore. I don't know. The multiplayer is free. I get that. But, like, why not the campaign? Yeah. I guess it's more of a full package to have five Guardians. You know what I mean? I get that. But, like, why not the new campaign? Interesting move on yeah. some of these. But really good games. Nonetheless, like, let's not discount this. This is incredible. This mm -hmm. is a solid lineup here right now. And so, essentially, what's going to happen here, on September 14th, Xbox Live Gold members will automatically become Game Pass Core members with no change in pricing, and have immediate access to the new library of over 25 high-quality games. Members deal, Member deals and discounts will also be part of the Game Pass Core, uh, Xbox Game Pass Core. Games with gold will come to an end on September 1st. Good. So one more month of that, Gary. Players can continue to access any Xbox One games they previously redeemed through Games with Gold if they remain a Game Pass Core or Game Pass Ultimate member, regardless of subscription status. Any Xbox 360 titles redeemed via Games with Gold in the past will be kept in a player's library. How's that sound to you, Gary? So really, nothing major is changing. What is happening is you are getting a new rebrand. We're saying goodbye to, of course, Xbox Live Gold that has served us so well for 20 years, but it's time to put that to rest. Time to focus on the branding of Xbox Game Pass. But now you're getting, instead of Xbox games with gold, those two games a month that you hate, you're now getting a 25 plus game collection to play whenever you'd like. I'm glad they've done it. I think it's long overdue. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go back and find any number of clips, I'm sure, from previous episodes where I've complained about this, where I think it's confusing. Um, look, I'm an Xbox guy. I've been doing this for a long time and I couldn't fully explain to you how Xbox Live Games with Gold works in, in relation to Game Pass and the other offerings. Mm, I still yeah. don't 
I, I, I don't know where it is on the dashboard. <laughs> I don't know if I have it or not. I don't know anything uh-huh, about uh-huh. how that shit works. Um, and it was confusing. And it felt, it felt very much like, even just the name Xbox Live Gold feels like a vestigial remnant of the 360 era. Yeah. Like we've moved on. Sign you might as well bring past. back Velocity Girl. Like we've moved on. Yeah. Right? Bring back Jay Allard. Like if, we, if, we, if we're going to live in the past. No, no, no. Um, we've moved on. Game Pass is the future. I think it, it's largely about just rebranding, but it is simpler. The interesting thing now is though, like we all like to joke about how confusing the PlayStation Plus offering is with all those different tiers. Essential, Super Essential, Ultimate, Super Duper Ultimate you know, whatever. And go, well, why, why do you need all these features? Now we have that similarly, right? You got four you, you options got now. Core. Well, I, I, think it, is it, it, I think it's more, right? Core. Goal. Or core. Core. Console. Console. PC. PC ultimate. Ultra. So there's four, right? Okay, there's four. And then, then there'll be a family, yeah, yeah. family plan coming. Family plan coming. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I don't understand, given how this is laid out, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the difference between core and console, yeah. which is uh, it's only a dollar, Nine ninety nine, ten ninety nine. That's in between twenty five games and hundreds of games. Why wouldn't you pay the extra dollar and get hundreds of games? They want to have you at the choice. They, I, I, I know, believe- but it's not. But it's not even a choice like, it, unless you're so. If you're that broke that a dollar is making a difference, you shouldn't even be playing video games. It's, you know, every person is different, Gary. Like we've talked about before. You remember they tried to raise the price, and we had this conversation. But yeah. A dollar a month? It Come is on. very interesting, Gary, of like... But, 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 I mean, hundreds of games versus t- the 25 that you just... Mm-hmm. You're going to... You're going to... Like, 25 games are going to run out sooner or later. You're not going to want to play every one of them. Well, they, they said they That's will update That's a limited it. selection. They'll update those 25, and it says over 25. So they'll update it. They'll change games. You know what I mean? But I, know, I, I but do like, agree you with you, Gary. You, you, I don't understand 25 games for 10 bucks... Hundreds of games for eleven bucks. That doesn't make any any sense to me. Do you think this was this move here just to rebrand the name and essentially keep everything the same? Was yeah. just to avoid pulling the band-aid off that is, hey, just I get would, on game. I would have just killed Xbox Live Gold. Xbox and Live Gamers of Gold. You're just, gonna get I, on game Pass. Like, I don't just, unless the core pla- unless the core version is gonna be significantly cheaper, mm-hmm. or at least there's gonna be more of a differential in the price. There's a massive differential between 25 games and hundreds of games, but, they, but there's virtually no difference in the price. That part, I, I don't understand. Yeah. Of course, multiplayer is tied into all of this as well. Right. Of course, because they, Game those, Pass console co- doesn't have multiplayer. Game Pass right. core has multiplayer because that is what Xbox And again, Live now Gold you get was. into the grid of all the different checkboxes and it's, mm-hmm. you know, for the average consumer, it can become confusing. Yes, I, I truly believe they want to give you all the options, but it does feel like kind of a half-step measure of, Maybe we didn't want to rip off the Band-Aid and have that. Because right now, like that, you said, that, the vibes are good, Gary. What if I ripped off that Band-Aid? You make a good point, though, because that's the other differentiator. It's not just the number of games. It's that you get multiplayer or you don't. That's Correct. a big deal. But again, that's all the more reason for an extra dollar. Hundreds more games and multiplayer? No, multiplayer with core. Oh, no. No right. multiplayer. But you just added in, Gary. It's just so I get it. weird. I get it. This is the fucking Xbox One S, Xbox Series S all over again, where people are getting the wrong shit because it's branded in a, in a weird way. I think the people that are still paying for Xbox Live Gold are entrenched in that. They're the everyday gamer that we talk about, right? The people that are just working, they're nine to five or they're just kids. They have the very basic and that's all they need and that's all they want. And that's what that is, right? And then we elevate it from there, giving you the option as the player. Hey, do you want Xbox Game Pass console with hundreds of plus Game Pass games to go play? Do you not need multiplayer? I was going to say, maybe it makes, given that they're essentially the same I don't want to sound like a like a, a big shot, Mister Moneybags, mm-hmm. but a, a dollar, an extra dollar a month, doesn't sound like a lot to me. Right. But there is, but there's a. It, it's like, do you care about having lots of games, mm-hmm. or do you care about having multiplayer? That seems to be the choice. Yeah. Okay. And and so I think it's different for everyone. They're providing the options, but we are now at four different Game Pass offerings that you, the gamer, could get, and they're yeah. trying to hit you wherever you want to be. You want to be on it's PC. Nice, it's nice to have options, it. but I also like simplicity. I, I know you do. I know you do, Gary, but the vibes are good right now. The vibes are better. Vibes are good. And I think you can trust us when we say that. Like, I've said this many times before. Like, mm-hmm. I have no time for anyone that, t- that, that complains, about, uh, complains about us being like Xbox or, you know, Platform Warriors because mm-hmm. we talk about how great Game Pass is all the time because it is great. Um, but also, when, it, when shit is shitty, we call it. We talk about it. But titles coming your way, all you need to know is on September 14th, we're saying goodbye to Xbox Live Gold. Good. And it's becoming Xbox Game Pass Core. You're going to get 25 plus high quality titles on that for no 
dollar change right I'm there, so right? glad like, they finally ripped off the band-aid. Same price for you. So that's a big deal right there. Talking about friends and family, Gary, a little update for you. IGN has confirmed with Microsoft that the Friends and Family Game Pass preview will end on August 15th. Ah. They got a statement from a Microsoft sp spokesperson that said, we're excited about how the Friends and Family plan has resonated with gamers and we'll be evaluating the learnings to help create an offer that we can bring to more players worldwide in the future. Yeah. So of course, I, wonder if, I wonder if the fact that the trial is ending means that the full launch you know, is, is coming. I would say soon. I, I don't know if we're... This year? I don't think it's imminent. Man, this year's... We're already catching up, Gary. Time for the holidays over. Would, would be good. Time for the holidays would be good, but what's the price? Where do we stand? Am I already introducing too many game passes to you? Like I said, it's going to be a fifth option. It's going to be a fifth option. Or they right. could even fragment it and have different versions of the family plan. What's the price point? We talked about this many of times. We've thrown around 25, again? thrown around 30. Bear, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe, I believe Ultimate is sixteen ninety nine now. Went up from fifteen ninety nine to sixteen ninety nine, or fourteen ninety nine to fifteen. Did 99? they say how many accounts you can have on the family plan? I believe during the test there was five. Okay, my guess is it'll either be twenty or twenty five bucks. My guess is thirty bucks. Twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine ninety nine. Five accounts. That's my guess. Okay. That's why I'm going to throw it at the dartboard. I think that makes you think to yourself, "Hmm, I could do that." I could get four more friends, and we could throw down five bucks each. Yeah, right now Game Pass Ultimate is sixteen ninety nine a month. Yeah, so I, 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 I think you got to double that. I, I, I'm gonna, I mean? I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna say twenty five. You, you say, say thirty. I say I'm gonna say thirty five. Okay, I like that, Gary. Yeah, uh, very cool though. They tested it out. Let's see what their thoughts are. But you know, uh, if you can find some friends, you can all pitch in and get it and save even more money. If you think about, it. let's let's say it's thirty bucks and you've got five friends, you're paying six dollars. Nothing. Yeah. Easy. So I'll, yeah, quickly, I did the math in my head. I, <laughs> Math. 25 divided by 20, 30 divided by 5. Gary, do this math in your head because unfortunately, the Xbox and Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard King is not done. It's always the Brits fucking everything up. You isn't thought it, Mike? we were done, Those Gary. Fucking we, Brits. we had Shannon Liao on to explain it to you and I. We had Rebecca Valentine on to come celebrate that it should be over because they won and they were moving past the FTC. And then, gosh darn it, you thought that July 18th deadline was going to be the one. And Listen, it's not. whether it's Napoleon, Hitler, or Microsoft, <laughs> it's always the Brits saying, not so fast. <laughs> so here's the deal. Announced this week, the Microsoft acquisition of ABK has had its deadline of July 18th postponed to October 18th. The postponement of three months is to allow the parties involved to gain approval from the CMA in the UK. Brad Smith shared, uh, shared that Microsoft will continue the commitment to ABK, and if the deal doesn't go through, they will pay the penalty of $3 billion. And get this, now it has increased that to $3.5 billion if not closed by August 29th and $4.5 billion by September 15th if it fails to close the deal. It's not going to fail to close. Too big to fail. Too big to fail. And I like that we're seeing some dates and some numbers here showing some confidence of, hey, we think we're going to get this done before this. We're going we're gonna to get this done. So what's interesting is the UK is this last holdout, right? EU, everywhere else in the world. USA obviously was, the, it's all sleep 40 plus regulators. FCC have already approved this, yeah. like lost big. Didn't look good. At they the lost, end of the day, didn't look good. worse in court than fucking Trump. And that's saying something. <laughs> now, the UK is the last holdout. You see that Microsoft have been saber rattling a little bit, saying, well, maybe we just won't release games in the UK then if you're not going to play ball, which would suddenly now everyone hates the government in the UK. It's like, I can't play Call of Duty because of fucking Rishi, Sh Rishi Sunak? Fuck you. And there's an election coming up. So they've got to they, they, they play nice. And I'm telling you, this is happening. Look, I don't, I don't want to make this all political because you know that's, mm -hmm. not, that's not my vibe. It's not our vibe. It's not my energy. No. But, like, let me tell you something. After 13 years of Tory government, my homeland has been circling the drain for a long fucking time. It's, it's bad over there, Mike. Oh, okay. Brexit, cost of living, it's a joke. Britain is fucked. And this is an exact perfect example of why. They're fucking privacy laws, and it's all bad over there. You could have a situation where Call of Duty is not released in the UK anymore. You could have a situation, because Apple have said similar things. Britain has a, has a data privacy law, basically, that says you must, Apple or whoever, any technology company that wants to do business in the UK, must give us full access to your encryption so we can read people's emails or whatever when we ask for it. 
And Apple's like, fuck you, we're not going to do that. Because they, they don't, right? Apple's actually pretty good about something. Like, they don't like submit to, they tell the FBI to fuck off all the time and they need to get into someone's phone, right? You've got to have a really good reason, right? Um, Apple's now saying, well, maybe we'll just cut off iMessage and FaceTime in the UK. And they could do that. And I guarantee you the British government would take a bigger hit than, than Apple or Microsoft would. So I think Microsoft is going gonna, is gonna to do a little bit of brinkmanship here. And the, the, and the, the government's going to have to, for once in its life, come to its senses and do the right thing. Let's get this deal done, Gary, because let me tell you what happened over the weekend. Something awesome happened, Gary. What's that? Maybe it was some magic wands. Maybe it was some people working in the background to do some awesome stuff. Maybe it was anticipation of this July 18th dead, deadline. But, of course, some Call of Duty servers have gotten some back-end maintenance, Gary, and some classic Call of Duty titles have seen a major boost in player base. Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 3, a number of other classic Call of Duty titles have received a server update, making the online play just a little bit better and smoother for fans all around the globe. And I took part in this, Gary. Oh, yeah? I jumped in and played some Modern Warfare Call of Duty 2 way back in the day, and oh, man... We found a match instantly. We relived awesome moments. I was laughing, having a ton of fun. People have said the servers have been on this whole time, but people have said it's always been drowned out by hackers and cheaters. Now they're seeing a nice improvement. I think, people it was, flock I think it was to Tom this. Warren that, that, that uh, showed a thing that said that those games are now like the most popular games um, on the Xbox platform currently. Pretty everyone's, rad. Everyone's rushing back to them. Rushing back and to them. And it's weird. Play. I saw a thing the other day at Team Fortress 2, which has been out since... What, 2000? I don't know how long it's been around. Barrett, how long has Team Fortress 2 been around? Oh, uh, I, I definitely was in high school. Um, I would need to look it up, but I think it Team was Fortress bit... 2 last week hit its highest concurrent player base in its lifetime. Team Fortress 2! 2007. 2007. So, yeah. Amazing. That game's been out for, I can't do the math anymore. Almost 20 years. 16 years. Yeah. years. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's more popular than ever. People are playing Xbox 360 games more than current generation. Everything, all, everything that's old is new again. Here's a I cool love one. It. Good generation of games right there. Yeah. Shadowrun from the Xbox 360. Right. The iconic Shadowrun game also got some server maintenance. Much easier to find people to play with, which is awesome now because I loved Shadowrun back in the day. I thought that game deserves a remake or remaster. That had one of the earliest cross plays ever with Windows Vista. Back in the day, if you remember, which was insane and crazy to think about. Oh, I gotta get I gotta one more gripe Play it up. before oh, I forget. Okay. I know this is a bit random. We'll I, I gotta dial it all Gary. the way back. Bring it back. All the way back to Diablo. Bring it back. You know what? You know what's some bullshit, Mike? What? What? When I got the final altar of Lilith, yeah. And there's like 160 of them. A ton. There's a lot. And some of them are really hard to find. I ran around with a with a map that I found, an IGN map. Yeah, Shout out yeah. to all the people that put together strategy guides, because that's fucking hard work. And Shout out to the wiki task, teams. Yep. But how many times do you find yourself going and looking at like IGN or Polygon or whatever has got some map or whatever that you need to find everything? Yes. Um, my wife and I was actually, my wife had the iPad open. She's like, okay, it's over there, and I'm going around and getting it. Like, we're kind of two-manning it. Um, when I got that 160th, whatever it is, altar, I'm waiting for that achievement to pop, right? That big shiny diamond, the rare achievement. You know what it gave me? Fuck all. How is there no achievement for every fucking altar of Lilith in the game? Like, that's like the, that's such a no-brainer. It gives, that's your gave me that's nothing. And I'm pissed off because I wanted it because I'm behind Alana in the fucking monthly oh. rankings right now. She's killing it. I'm Because I'm, Diablo is very stingy with it. I'm playing, a lot, I'm playing the game probably mm -hmm. more than, playing more hours of a game more than anyone above me on that monthly. I don't know why it bothers me, but it does. That monthly leaderboard. I love that monthly leaderboard. But yeah, I'm yeah. not getting anywhere because it never gives you any achievements. It gives you achievements for something stupid, like make every type of potion. Yeah. Every altar of Lilith? I'm thinking here comes 100 Gs. Fucking big fat donut hole. Bullshit. I, I'm telling you, we still got to get Stallion and or my good friend Ray Narvaez Jr. on the podcast to talk about achievements. Because those two guys, they know achievements. They, don't, they know what needs to happen in that world to be elevated to the next level. I, I, was, I just wanted to gripe about I like that, that one Gary. thing. Let's, uh, let's celebrate some games. Go on. Coming your way because July Game Pass update for the second half of July is here and we have games that are out now. Tectonica, the game preview, is coming to cloud console and PC. Toem coming to cloud console and PC. The late great Portillo, I believe, is in this game. Oh. Set off on a delight for expedition and use your photographic eye to uncover the mysteries of the magical Toem in this hand drawn adventure game. So, a good one for your family to go check out. And Porty's in it, if you're a big, kind of funny best friend. 
The Cave coming to cloud and console. Double fine classic. We talked about that. Maquette coming to console and PC. Maquette is a first person reclusive puzzle game that recursive. Takes- Recursive, thank you so oh, much. Well, that, what, what, what is Maquette? I've never heard of it. Maquette is supposed to be a really good puzzle game. Have you played Viewfinder yet? No, but I saw Patrick Kleppett was Yo, raving about it. I Viewfinder's should get that. dope. Yeah. Viewfinder's really good. Not on Xbox, but really dope. I have, the, I have other systems. I know you do, but if you want a puzzle game, Maquette actually, people talk highly of as well. Okay. So Maquette, okay. go check that one out. Uh, on July 20th, Figment 2, Creed Valley coming to con- That's cloud. Today. Console and PC. Wandering Village coming out to cloud console and PC. The Wandering Village is a city building simulation game on the back of a giant wandering creature. Build your settlement and form a symbiotic relationship with the Colossus. This game, I got to play at GDC. Really, really like it. If you're into Age of Empires, if you're into city building management games, this game is dope. Controls very well on the console uh, controller. Well done. Check this one out. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Coming on, uh, July 25th, Serious Sam, Siberian Mayhem, <laughs> Cloud Console, PC. Serious Sam. I always forget, one of those, you always forget it exists. What's up with this, Gary? I've never played a Serious Sam game. I've I'm, seen them before. Have you ever played this? I've, I've dabbled with it. It's never been my cup of tea. What's the deal with that? I don't know. It's like a Duke Nukem kind yes. of vibe. Duke Nukem. Like Doom, a comedy shooter. Yeah, there, was a v, there was a VR version. I don't know. It's never, it's never been my thing. No good? I don't know if it's good or not. I just never okay. got into it. July 31st, end the month, with Venba coming to console and PC. If you're interested in Venba and you want to know more about it, guess what? My friends over at the PS I Love You XOXO team, Janet and Mr. Greg Miller, take you on a cool journey. They actually do a hands-on preview event on the podcast with the creator of Venba. So if Not you want to learn more. Not hands-on preview event. Well, uh, he's hands on telling him, right? Well, this is a presentation, so this okay. is essentially like a, a presentation. It's almost like a uh, like a a slide of a different uh, things, uh, kind of giving a background on Vembo, what inspired it, the development process of making a cooking game, um, and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's it's a really cool kind of thing. But I just wanted to uh, you know make the make the distinction clear for sure. Are you getting a little bit tired of pixel art? In video games. Not I'm sure Dave the that. Diver is great, but when I first saw that trailer, the very first thing I saw was, oh, fucking on pixel art again. It's hotness right now. I mean, it's, it's so cool, hot. but like, I kind of feel like it's getting, it's being a bit overused as an art style. Give it's me everywhere. two more years, then I'll say that. Yeah, okay. I'm vibing with it right now. On August 1st, Celeste comes to cloud console and PC. Great game. It's a must-play game. This game is so good. If you like platforms, if you like Ori, go play it. Hard game. Good game. DLC and game updates for you, Gary. Let's take to the high seas together, because I know this one you're going to like. Sea of Thieves, The Legend of Monkey, Monkey Island, Island, July 20th. The game they never told Ron Gilbert about, Ron Gilbert about yeah. Gary, what's up? Are we jumping into this? No, nah, because I, I, I tried to get into Sea of Thieves that one time, and it didn't happen because my Xbox was being weird, and that oh. was, they had one shot, and they blew it. Their Pirates of the Caribbean one was so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so good, Gary, that I'm excited to jump into this. Okay. So, yeah, I know that team over at Rare. Sea of Thieves is one special. of those games that, like, people, you, you don't hear a lot of conversation about it if you're not into it, but yeah. it's really popular. There. People are really, people are really good. like it, yeah. July 25th, Dead by Daylight, Nicolas Cage DLC. Oh, yeah, I like this. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. If you're ready to jump in, Nicolas Cage will be there. He is a survivor, not a killer. So you can run up with four Nicolas Cages if you want. I, I, I mean, I don't think I'll play the game, but uh, I'll, 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 watch, I'll probably watch some YouTubers play it because that's very, very um, popular game with streamers as well, Dead by Daylight. Oh, yeah. So this, that's a good game. Yeah. That's a good game. Yeah. Uh, for all you anime fans out there, I know we got three of us right here, our director I like Bear, anime. You and I. Crunchy, Crunchyroll Premium Perk. For a limited time, get 75 days of Crunchyroll Premium right now with your Xbox So game that's Castle. actually how I got more into anime like t- <coughs> about a year ago okay they had the same perk 75 days of Crunchyroll premium yeah. which opens up their whole library um with game pass mm-hmm. i redeemed the perk i got and i discovered a bunch of anime from oh, yeah yeah it was great and Crunchyroll's got some good stuff and i like the fact that there's a whole um cozy section cozy anime which is like my vibe now. oh i like that like just like like some girl who lives with her cat like nothing okay. happens. That's okay. my speed these days. How about a grand adventure on the high seas, searching for the One Piece? 
It's too much. It. It's too it's much. Too much, Gary. Don't do Gary, it to yourself. Gary, Aren't I like can't. Five Mike's fucking lost thousand the episodes. Yes, and I'm on three hundred and twenty-two, oh, yeah. and I can't stop. <laughs> Gary. I'll tell. I'll tell I'm you. The, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the animes that I'm into the most. Lay it on us. We love you. And I'm going to sound like a total casual because I'm just going to say all the popular okay. ones. Yeah, yeah. Demon Slayer. Yes. Boom. You want season I told, three? I told you what happened about. And Barry, you may remember this. When I got to the end of season two, the entertainment district arc, yeah. that final battle, is it upper six that he fights? The one that's yeah, two, it's two the, demons? It's, it's the first upper ranked demon that's the first, killed. Yeah, it's, it, yeah the years. first upper ranked demon that they fight. It's like the, just the fight alone is like three episodes long. And, and so I, remember, I remember watching it and thinking, is it just like, I don't know, I haven't seen a lot of anime, but this might be like the fucking best anime fight I've ever seen. <laughs> and, and so I went onto Gary... Twitter and I was like, is it anime people tell me like, I feel like I've just seen the best anime fight ever. And I fully expected a bunch of people to come and go, oh no, you need to see this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. They were like, no, that is the best anime fight ever. Yeah. Oh, it's and fucking it, yeah. amazing. And let me tell you, season three uh, just wrapped up recently, Gary. Swordsmith Village. And they like, I, it's not as flashy as Entertainment District, but it's just the animation alone, I would say, they oh, somehow shit. upped the ante. Hey, Fucking virtual on, Baron. Baron. How, yeah. how long has he been able oh, to yeah. do that? Come uh, on, he's talented. Yeah, the, the you look like you're actually broken. there. Yeah, I know. It's full that is weird. fucking cool. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, Demon Slayer, highly recommend for anybody uh, getting the crunchy. Yeah, rolling. I got I to do season three. Also, Jujutsu Kaisen season two uh, is airing right now. So a perfect time to check out Jujutsu Kaisen. So the Ooh. other ones, the other ones I like. Play it on me. Um, and again, I'm just going to do the... I'm, no, 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 there's no deep cuts here. No, give oh, no, I, like. there might be a couple. Okay, uh, and Barrett can... like, like His like, instant reactions, as I say them, will be interesting. Yeah. Some of them are obvious. I, I do... I, it lost me with this latest, latest season because it's okay. so bizarre, but I still love Attack on Titan. Yup. Levi Ackerman is one of my favorite characters in all of anime. That guy's a fucking badass. <laughs> I love that character. Yeah, I like and that. And I think they did him dirty in season four. Um... Has, has the uh, uh, Barry? Do you watch Attack on Titan? No, not really. Okay, oh, I was going to ask you something tried, about it. I, I tried I, out the first season. They, this wasn't for me. It, they did so the new, like the last, this is the the final season, but then they split it into like eight different parts. Yeah, exactly, of course. So yeah. the last episode that I saw was the beginning of like what promised it to be like the biggest battle in Attack on Titan oh, history. Oh, cool! And so I, I'm, I don't know if the next episode has dropped yet, but I'm very keen to see more i see how attack on titan because it is now like the final run i like that um, yeah, yeah my all-time favorite anime lay it on me and there's nothing no, no I'll, I'll save it for last okay there's another one that i like it's really weird but i like it a lot it's called assassination classroom okay. you know this one no oh, i've never heard, heard a lot about this one yeah it's really fucked up <laughs> so there's a school for there's a school for assassins oh, okay which cool. sounds very anime sounds very right? cool okay yeah just bear with me it's funny like Every anime that you, any, any anime um, synopsis or premise that you hear, you're like, that can't be real. But no, they're all real. They make all this shit. So it's, it's, a, it's a school in Japan, obviously, for um, kids who are going to graduate and go on to be like elite assassins. Okay. But it looks like a school. They wear school uniforms and blazers and stuff and, you know, school boys and school girls. But they're learning like assassina assassination techniques. This alien, this like godlike alien shows up who basically is like looks like a big octopus with like a big smiley face, like a big round Pac-Man head. It's really oh, I've seen weird. that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really fucking with uh -huh. a big like permanent grin. And he basically says, he's got, he's got like godlike powers. And he says, in th I think he says like in 30 days or at the end of the year, I am going to crash the moon into planet Earth and fucking kill everybody. Uh, unless one of the students in my class can figure out a way to assassinate me first. But he's absolutely unkillable. And so all of the, every time they try it, he, they fail. Because he can't, he's like, he's, he can't be killed. And I, I got, I stopped watching it, but I need to get back into it because I want to know what happens. It's mad. This is wild. I like this. Assassination yeah, yeah. Classroom. Okay. So I like that one. There's a really, really weird one. Like, you know, there's like a whole strange, like weird, like, um, I, I, I'm not getting into like the porny stuff because that like that that whole section is just fucking weird to me. But yeah, there's yeah. like relationship type anime okay. that's fun. Um, there's one called Rent a Girlfriend. Okay, that is really interesting. I don't know if you've seen that one. That one's fun. You should have me on this. Do podcast. you see this? I got yeah, this my, I got a lot of opinions. Hey, if you didn't know, if you if something is awoken in you while you're listening to the kind of funny X cats, where you're like, man, I love talking anime. Or I like anime. Check out our quarterly show, kind of anime, hosted by the one, the only Barrett Courtney. I get to join him. We talk all things anime, and we're currently 
recording episode three right you now. You've got to so have me as a guest on soon. kind of because I could bring like the you know the the average the everyman oh, vibe. Oh snap! Not yeah, a kind of but happen. just like the average you know like the dabbler. Yeah, yeah. Rena girlfriend is really fun. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with this. I found this out through. I was like, what's this rena girlfriend? And so I watched it. Yeah. And it turns out it's a real thing. So in Japan, like loneliness is a really big problem, particularly okay. among young people. Yeah, yeah. And so you can literally, it's not prostitution. They don't do anything inappropriate. But you can you can go on an app and rent a pretty girl to go on a quote unquote date with. Oh, and okay. she'll pretend to be your girlfriend. She'll like, she'll hold hands with you, laugh at your jokes, go eat sushi with you, go to a movie, go Make to the aquarium. Make my mom proud of me that I finally got a girlfriend. Right, yeah, introduce it to you. So that's the thing. <laughs> so he, this guy, who's kind of a sad guy, breaks the one rule, which he falls in love with the girl. Ah. Which, you know, you're not supposed to do. Love. Right, because it's all professional. Like, as soon as the date's over, that's it. You're done. Um, and so, but he, but like, he falls in love with her. He introduces her to, introduces her to his parents because his parents are like, when are you going to get a girlfriend? He brings her into the mix and say, well, here's my girlfriend. And she has to pretend to be his girlfriend for the benefit of the parents as well. And it's like a weird sitcom. It's bizarre and ja very Japanese and in, the, in a way that only anime can be. Okay. But it's nuts. I don't know. I just really enjoy it. I like that, Gary. That's, that's a different flavor. What's number the big one? one? Number Give one all the time. Nothing's ever going to beat this for me. What is it? You know what I'm going to say. I know. One Punch Man. Lay it on him. Come on. The you know they're making a game. I, I played it. Is, there is a game. There's another game now. Oh, there's out. a new, new one? one. Yeah, yeah, new one. I don't. I, is it, I want to. I got to go find out if the new season is out yet. There's okay. been two seasons of One Punch Man. Good. They're both great. The first one's better than the second. I agree. I love agree. them both. Yeah. And I know the third one's because there's way, 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 way more manga than there is anime. Okay, like they could okay. probably go for several more seasons. Yeah. I know they're working on season three. I just don't know if it's out yet. But like the second, if that, if like, if I find, if I go on my phone right now and check that to see that One Punch Man is out on Crunchyroll. Yeah. I'm fucking watching You're it in. tonight. Uh, yeah, you got to watch One love Punch. One Punch That's Man. That's a good show, Gary. It's, and if you want to check it out, it's on, uh, you don't have to go Crunchyroll. It's on Hulu and Netflix as well. I like that. I like that. Well, you get that Crunchyroll Premium Pack right now with Game Pass Ultimate perks. Yeah, that's, leaving, a, that's a good perk. If you've got that's Game a great Pass perk. Ultimate, you should redeem that. Leaving on July 31st, Dreamscaper, Expeditions Rome, Marvel's Avengers, The Ascent, and the one that I would encourage all of you to go play, Two Point Campus. Oh, yeah. Two Point Campus is a ton of fun. If you're, We've talked a lot about simulation and city building Love games. Those games. If fun, you're yeah. interested in any of those... Two Point Hospital and Two Point Campus, very good games. Two Point Campus on Game Pass, big win. Very much big the spiritual win. successor to the old Molyneux Bullfrog games. Theme park, theme hospital. Yep. Oh, yeah. God, I love those so much. Yeah. Here's the deal, Gary. We're going to end the show with some fun ones. And I want us moving forward to get the community involved, get the best friends at Kind of Funny and any Xbox gamer more involved by having a community segment where they can bring in their questions, comments, concerns, maybe topics of discussion. Okay. And so I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the community. So I grabbed some questions that best friends have written into, of course, kindoffunny.com slash Xcast from this point forward to have your voice heard and be part of the show, which is what I really want here because I want some best friends to be involved in it. And so I have three questions for you and I to discuss right now to end the show. From Anonymous, dear Gary Witta, Yo. as someone who has worked in both games and film mm -hmm. and is currently on strike because of the streaming model being broken, That's right. do you have any thoughts on the sustainability of game subscription models like Game Pass? In 10 years, will we be saying Game Pass broke the industry? If not, what do you think makes games different from films and TV? It's a good question. It's, it, I've seen it come up a couple of times now. Um... The difference is, I guess currently, is that Game Pass and PlayStation Plus is another option rather than just buying games a la carte. Whereas with you know, Netflix and all the Disney Plus and all the streamers, it basically completely took over, right? Like they still sell Blu-rays and you can still buy in 4K discs and you can still buy movies on iTunes or whatever or whatever service. But I think very few people do that anymore. I think people just went, like, apart from the cineasts that like want their 4K Blu-ray with the higher bit rate and, um, you know, lossless audio and everything. For most people, like I was going to, I was thinking that we love the Super Mario movie. My kid really loved it. I looked into buying it on um, iTunes and I was like, oh, it's going to be on Peacock for free in like two weeks. So I'll just wait two weeks and not buy the movie. There it is. So yeah. I really pay for Peacock. Of course. So like, I think that as, a, as opposed to Game Pass and, and PlayStation Plus, which is a nice adjunct and it's debatable whether or not it would ever like take a really, um, uh, take over, Nintendo doesn't do it at all, right? right? And they're one of the biggest players. Uh, 
the studios went all in on streaming without really doing the math. They were all ch they were all chasing Netflix. They were all chasing this gold rush of like, oh, Netflix is making all this money. We got to get you know built and they and they built these apps: Disney Plus, uh, Paramount Plus. You know, they all just fucking and throw all their content up there. Apple obviously got into it as well. None of these none of these places sell content. It's all you know one subscription. And now they say now they're saying they're not making any money. Now that might be bullshit. Hollywood has a long history of very creative accounting uh, to prevent people. Talk to my talk to my friend Ed, Ed Solomon, who wrote the Men in Black movies. According to Sony, those movies have made no money. Do you think that's true? No, no. of course it's fucking not. They just don't want to pay him. Peter Jackson had to take New Line to court. They tried to, they tried to say that the Lord of the Rings movies didn't make any money. And he took them to court and they had to pay him. My friend Eric Heiserer, who wrote this movie Bird Box, the, it, for, at one time it was the most streamed movie on Netflix, the most popular movie on Netflix, and they tried to say it wasn't making any money. So they didn't have to pay him any residuals. He went to the Writers Guild and they uh, took him to, I don't know if they took him to court, but they got into like a legal proceeding and forced Netflix to own up to the fact that in fact they were making shitloads of money and they not only had to pay him what they owed him, but they had to, he was a test case, they had to pay other writers millions of dollars in residuals that they were, that they were keeping from them. These people are not, these are not good people, Mike. Yeah. And that's why we're on strike. I like that. You cannot, I, don't get me started, you cannot fucking float around the world on a $500 million yacht and then say you can't afford to pay the people that made the content that bought you that fucking yacht. Come on, man. No. You know that. So do we see the same in games? So yeah, I went off the question. No, no, I, I, I like where you're at, right? Because you set us up so perfectly of where we're at now, right? Especially with games and being on the horizon of subscription services, maybe coming to dominate, maybe not, right? Like there is a very interesting blend of where we're at right now where people still buy games. We're not all in on Netflix and Hulu like many people are where they just don't buy movies anymore. So the question is, do you think we'll have this problem in 10 years from now with game subscription services? One final point. Lay it on me, Gary. I want to hear it. Man. Netflix just this week posted record, all-time record quarterly profits. They're bill billions. And, they, and they're saying they can't afford to pay anyone. Something's, something's wrong with this picture, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're on strike. We all want to go back to work. I'm desperate to go back to work. I'm fucking over it. I like playing Diablo 4, but honestly, I'd rather be working. I have so many projects that are ready to go that I was literally getting ready to take out for the, to the strike, uh, before the strike. And now, they're all ha now they all have to wait, maybe until next year. I'm not planning to work again next year. I'm very fortunate in that I already made, made, my, made enough this year to qualify for another year of health insurance. Thank God for health, my health insurance. Oh, yeah. It covers my whole family. Wow. A lot of people don't make that much. And they have to figure out their own health insurance because the health system in this country is a disgrace. I, I, I could go on. I, I know you I, will. I'm not, I'm not going to. But like, you see these people on these fucking idiots going, oh, wait, actors, don't they get paid enough already? Aren't they all rich? No, of course they're not. Jessica Chastain made the point, 87%. You can't look at Jessica and go, well, I, I, isn't everyone Jessica Chastain? Of course they're fucking not. 87% of members of SAG don't even make the minimum $26,000 a year. Think about even living on $26,000 a year, but that's also the minimum where your guild health insurance kicks in. They're not even making that much because these streamers won't pay, they, they won't pay any money. I want to go back to work, Mike. We all want to go back to work. But until these billion-dollar companies and these billionaires pay us a decent amount of money did you see the other thing in the, the other thing that came back from SAG? Lay it on me. What two two of the things that they asked for? Increase the penalties for uh, not providing the cast with adequate meal breaks, which haven't been Come on, updated man. since 1961. Do you know what? Do you know what the do you know what the what the uh, uh, um, AMPTP's counter to that was? They didn't even counter. They just said no. They just rejected it. It's pennies to them. It's a pittance. The other one was increase the penalties for not allowing actors to have sufficient rest periods between work days because they're expected to work 18-hour days, seven days a week. Rejected. 
I don't know what these people think they're doing. Do you see the thing about them cutting down the trees outside Universal? Ni that. 95 plus degrees heat in LA right now. And the, and the picketers who are walking the picket line outside Universal Studios were walking in the shade of these beautiful ficus trees that have always been along Bar and Boulevard. They showed up one day this week and someone had been out in the middle of the night and fucking chopped all the trees. Illegally so there's no too. shade anymore. Because those aren't their trees. Those are the city's trees. And yeah. The city's investigating. Yeah. It. Come on. LA Come City on, Council is now saying, well, we didn't chop them down. And in fact, they're in violation of various different branches of tree law, which I don't even think you know was Yo, a thing. That's a big deal, Tree Gary. law is serious. A big fucked that's up. a serious deal, bro. They might have, they no might have to replant all of those trees, which is going to cost them millions. Of, it's already costing them millions of dollars a mm. day. It's been, it's been pointed out before. For the amount of money that, Guild, that, that the Writers Guild and the Actors Guild are asking for, they could have resolved it. It's already cost them more to drag this out than it would have been if they just paid what we asked for, which is 2% of what they make. So back to the question, Gary. Give me a, give me a we, fucking break. Sorry, you, you've got me started. Are we going to be worried? I know I got you started. So are we going to be worried about this in the games industry? Well, it's going to be a different, it's going to be a different equation because obviously um, on, on, in terms of what I've just been talking about, you know, yep. video game workers aren't unionized, but they need to be. Okay. I'm hoping that this hot labor summer that we're having will finally, you know, encourage some, uh, the animation isn't, you know, there's a whole bunch of people in creative fields that need to get unionized yeah. and get organized. And I hope they do. Um, in terms of, is it the same kind of catastrophic situation where all of, these, all of these big studios pivoted to streaming business models without figuring out if it was actually going to make money or not, and yeah. now they're losing money, or have been losing money? Again, Netflix just made record profits. Um, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily think so, because again, because they didn't get video, it's not like, the, the, the equivalent would be this. Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo are saying, well, you don't buy your games anymore, or you, you, can, you, you just buy these subscriptions. Like, you can still buy games, but that's like for a niche market of like hardcore enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. But 99% of people are now going to just stream games. Yeah. Right, or get, have a Game Pass service rather than buy games. That's what the movie and TV industry did. Yeah. I don't think video games have not gone all into that extent. And I think seeing the cautionary tale of what's happening now with the streamers, I don't think they will. So the, my answer is no, I don't think, it's, I don't think the same thing's going to happen. Good one right there, Gary. Very knowledgeable and schooling us all. Last one, since we took up some time, I want to go to Gene Jacket, who writes in and says, now that the Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has released and effectively bombed, do you think that Microsoft slash Bethesda plans for machine, gun, uh, machine games indie, uh, machine games indie game change at all? We learned that the that in the FTC case that Microsoft predicted that it would sell 10 million copies on PlayStation alone before making it Xbox exclusive. But now, with how poorly Dial of Destiny performed at the box office, it sure seems like Microsoft massively overestimated the appeal of the IP. What do you what do you do with an expensive, still in development game based on an IP that's seemingly no longer relevant? Is it too late to scale back, or do they continue on full steam ahead and just let it be be a lost leader for Game Pass? Thanks for all the fantastic shows, KF Crew. I think that's a very good question. It's, it's a the, great the, question. The thought had occurred to me as well. Yeah, late on. Did you game. see Indiana Jones? I did not see this new one yet. So I thought I saw it. I actually thought it was quite good. Really? Yeah, it didn't okay. crack. It didn't crack my top two. Okay, it's, it's not my. It's uh, probably my. It's probably my the top two because it's probably my so third. Third favorite. That's a positive. That's good. yeah. But That's my but my ranking thought. is weird though, because like most people would go Raiders and then Last Crusade. Yeah, I didn't like Last Crusade. Okay, and I really didn't like Crystal Skull. I thought Crystal Skull was just bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but my, I like Raiders and Temple of Doom in my of top course. two, and I would yeah. put Dial of Destiny probably in it in third. It's really good. Okay, uh, if you, like, it, it captures the, the fair play to, to Jim Mangold. The 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 it feels like an old school Indiana Jones film. Yeah, yeah, and it's with some genuinely really amazing stuff in it. And I was it was I was sad to see. I mean, they are probably going to lose money on it. Yeah. They will pro Disney will probably lose money on this Indiana Jones okay. movie. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably good that they said this was, this was going to be the last one anyway. But like, I don't think you'll see, I don't think Disney's going to be like rushing to like reboot Indiana Let's Jones or anything. Going. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, for people like me, I'm 50 years old. Um, I grew up on Indiana. I was 10 years old, uh, nine years old with Indiana Jones when Raiders Lost Ark came out. And it was one of the movies that made me want to be a screenwriter. I fucking loved it. Amazing. Imagine being a 10-year-old kid and watching Raiders of the Lost Ark. How for the cool. First time. What a movie. Yeah, yeah. What a picture. Um, but I think the world has moved on. And I think a lot of the young people that go to the movies now don't give a fuck about Indiana Jones. And that's sad. But like Indiana Jones will always be a legendary part of cinema history. Of course. Uh, but 
I think, I think the world's moved on. And I did think about that. I was like, oh man, are the people at Bethesda thinking, oh fuck, like that's not, that's a bad canary in the coal mine for this game. Because who plays video games? I mean, everybody, but a lot of young people. Yeah. We don't give a shit about Indiana Jones now, we've seen. Mm -hmm. So obviously they're going to finish it out and get it out there, but they probably are ratcheting down their expectations for it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it too late to scale back or do they continue on Steam ahead? Are, are you scaling I don't, I, I don't, I don't, back? I don't know enough about. Because here's the deal. That. We talked about Todd Howard. Yeah. And like when we were doing that, we talked about Indiana Jones and people have said they, they saw what Todd Howard wrote about the idea of what Indiana Jones should be. And they said, I want that game. So presumably anyone who has thought about this game or seen this game thinks that this is the game. This is, this needs to be happening. Now I was on kind of funny games daily a couple weeks ago talking about how I don't think Indiana Jones has that big staying power amongst gamers. Like you said, mm -hmm. the younger, younger generation it's not about Indiana Jones. Nobody even knows that name, right? Like, you might have heard of it, but you don't know that name truly and that's honestly. The, that's the movie that your dad's into. But yeah. the catch is, is we need a good Uncharted, a good Tomb Raider game, right? And Indiana Jones can provide that, right? The name alone is not going to carry that. It has to be the Indiana game. Jones is obviously the, the, the precursor of, of all of those. Yes. And, and in turn, you know, Indiana Jones is obviously based on the old, like, you know, serial, the old serials of, of the 1930s and 40s. Um... Yeah, I, if, if I had to guess, I would guess that, that Bethesda and the people at Machine Games, it's probably, probably put a little bit of a cloud over it. Whether or not it affects how they continue to budget the mm -hmm. game and their ambition for it, I don't know. Like, once the train leaves the station, you know, you've probably just got to finish it out the way it is. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 like I said, they're probably going to lower their expectations a little bit because Definitely. they just had a massive test case and it did not work. <sighs> Again, nothing to do with the quality. There was, was a good movie. Mm -hmm. It was people, reviews were mixed on it. I personally liked it a lot. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. But... It, but it proved that audiences today don't really want it. Barrett, let's circle back really quick. If you remember, Barrett, it was me and Blessing on the table with Tim Geddes, and we were talking about how Disney and Microsoft made Indiana Jones exclusive mm -hmm. to Xbox. And I said that I don't think people in the streets will be screaming, Indy, because they don't get Indiana Jones. But if it was a Wolfenstein it'd be a different story. I think yeah. people would be more upset that Wolfenstein would be exclusive as opposed to Indy. And Tim didn't like that point. He was on the opposite side. Is that correct? From what you remember? Uh, I think the argument devolved into just in general success. Name recognition, uh, yeah. And, and name recognition, but general success, taking out the PlayStation side of it, I believe, of what would be more successful, a Wolfenstein 3 or an Indiana Jones yeah. game. Now, do you think it would be a different situation like, like you said, Dial of Destiny bombs, quote unquote. I don't right. know. I, I, I we don't want to. Look at, I love to look at the numbers, but I mean, it was an extremely expensive does, film yeah, to it, make. It bombs it because of how expensive it yeah. was. Yeah, it doesn't light up the world. Let's say that. How about yeah. that? I does, mean, yeah. I mean, these the these, these the movies summer. have to put up massive numbers yeah. to justify not just the budget. You think about what they that movie cost almost three hundred million dollars to make, and then add that on again, probably for the marketing and everything. These movies have to make like two billion dollars to earn out. I don't think it's going to do that. Do you think gamers are more upset that they're not getting indie, or do you think they would be more upset if they weren't getting Wolfenstein? Wolfenstein. Like, right this moment, if this was the game coming out, you think they'd be more I, upset I, that Wolfenstein is not if, if, going everywhere? If, if the people at Bethesda and Machine Games right now could, like, just slide into a parallel reality where, the, where they're, like, deep into the, the development of a new Wolfenstein game instead of Indiana Jones, based on how the movie just performed, I think they would probably take that. Yeah. Well, we'll find out very, very soon. I mean, from what everything is said, Todd has something good over there, and people are oh, excited I mean, about sure, it. I'm so sure the game's going to be really yeah, good. But the movie cool. was also pretty good. Oh, hey. But it's not enough. Great. Yeah, not enough. So that will end our fun community segment. Thank you all so much for writing, and we have many more questions to get through. Of course, you can get involved in the show and have Paris, Gary, and myself talk about some of your questions or topics anytime here on the Kind of Funny X-Cast. Write in to kindoffunny.com slash xcast and we'll have a fun topic of conversation with all of you. But Gary, lay it on me. One more thing. Lay it on me. Um, so today's the, as we record this, the 20th, right? Yes, it is. And so, but people will be listening to this. The 21st. The 21st. Yep. Do you know, happen to know what day that is? 721, 2022. 721, 2023. <laughs> Try to keep up. I'm keeping up. Yeah. I think My I know what day it is. It's your birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Tell birthday. Tell Gary. Happy it's birthday. Gary's birthday. birthday. Make sure you. to write him nice things in the comment section down below on YouTube. Tweet at him and find him 
running the streets of Sanctuary because he will be setting you free and saving the day. I'll be on tonight, I think. I'm going to try. I'm gonna try you going to stream? Tonight. You going to stream for no, your birthday? No, I'll just play. I think I'll just play tonight. What you, okay, before we go, what do you like to do on your birthday, Gary? What's the Well, thing? tomorrow I'm doing the Barbie Oppenheimer double bill. Yo, Gary! We got a, we got a sitter all day. I'm doing a 9 o'clock, nine a.m. Oppenheimer. Okay. Takes us up to about noon-ish because it's a three-hour movie. Love it. With an hour for hour lunch break. Okay. And then like a, a, like a 1.30 or 2 p.m. Barbie. And that's oh, my whole day. Love what that, a combo. Gary. Gary, let me take you out to dinner one time. Some good Indian food again. I, I, we got to go, we we do Benihana. We got to do Benihana. But I, I can't stop thinking about when you, you want to go back. Do you want to go back to the good place? I do. Gary. Uh, yeah. I really do. That butter chicken. Just oh, so fucking good. So much fun. With that, we got to get out of here. Wish Gary, Gary Widow birthday. And uh, we'll see you back here next week. Goodbye, everyone.